guys? Welcome to the 47th, 47th, Jesus, nice. 47th <laughs> episode of Directly to You, our Nintendo podcast. We have it every week, every single week. I'm joined by Parker, just like every other week. Hello, everybody. What's up? What's, What's up? up? I'm AJ, mm-hmm. as you as you uh, probably know, unless you're new, in which case, you should know that we post new videos every week on Fnags 4 on YouTube, youtube.com slash Fnags 4. And if you checked out that channel, you look at the videos and you're like, these guys are swell. I really want to help them out. You can become a member for $4.99 a month and you get exclusive emotes, loyalty badges, game of time with us, switch keys from time to time, access to a supported only discord. And, you know, you just get our general love, you know what I mean? Like in the podcast, we look into mm-hmm. comments, we're gathering stuff to talk about, and your name just pops up, and we, we just already know you, you know, because you got that Fnatic 4 icon next to you. Like, we love everybody here, but the people with the Fnatic 4 icon next to them, they get special love. Ask Grimhane. That's what's Special up. love. <laughs> special love. Um, you could also become a supporter on Anchor uh, through listener support. There you could pledge anywhere between a dollar and ten dollars. It's way easier to just go to YouTube route, but if you're like a super heavy podcast person and the only thing you consume of ours is our podcast, that's another option to help us out. Um But that that's it. That that's all the plug-in stuff. We can move on to show. How you doing, Parker? What's up? I'm doing fantastic. Today was a real good day, which is a lot of fun. Um so yeah, that's about that. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing good. I, most of my week has been uh, hell because I've been trying to figure out this whole Twitch stream and stuff. I mean, granted, I've been streaming for a while, as we all know. Mm-hmm. Um, but specifically trying to stream with other people is a pain. Oh, uh, yeah. Elgato hates Mac users. Mm. <laughs> so trying to do all the things that most streamers do, where it's like, yeah, let's hang out, you know, co-stream, get in the Discord, we'll chat it up, have fun, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Discord's like, nah, uh-uh, no. <laughs> can't, you can't do that with Elgato because I can't grab the, it's a it's a whole thing. I don't even want to talk about it, you know what I mean? It's a whole thing. I yep. didn't bring it up. Well, uh, I'm excited but, for whenever it gets figured out and we get to watch you stream with, uh, I don't know, you'll be streaming with Bob Wolf, you'll be streaming with Ninja, you'll be streaming with all of the, I don't know, streamers. That's just a huge <laughs> jump. That's a gigantic <laughs> jump. You're going to stream with Bob, you know, that dude that you stream with every single week, and That's then the Ninja, yep. Ninja's going to be involved. <laughs> yeah, easily. <laughs> he's going to find it. out that you can co-stream, and he'll be like, oh, he's going. Yeah, AJ that, he's can like, co-stream, oh man, alive. He's Gotta like, that's switch what up. I've been waiting for. I've been waiting <laughs> so long for him to figure this out. And he has it. He mm-hmm. got it. Yep. We, we needed it. Life changer for that guy. Call Drake. Put it on his calendar. <laughs> We're going to have a party. Yeah. Man. But yeah, what you been playing this past week? Is that a real question? Yeah, I mean, we... Smash. Never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> moving along. <laughs> so I'm, play- I'm playing Smash. And nice. speaking of that, Smash Bros. is literally on. Because when we start talking about the update, I need to start downloading. Uh, re- oh, I hate it. I hate it. The replay system is stupid and it's dumb. Oh, and it's the yeah. only reason why I haven't been tweeting all my sick highlight reels you know what i mean Uh because i gotta go through and say okay convert the video then i gotta watch it what is this what is this do i are we sitting here with physical film on a on a reel and converting it or is that what we're doing these days i can't just press a button and say turn this into an mp4 yep no that's ridiculous i don't because I, like I guess it. so my guess my understanding of it is it saves the like in-game engine stuff because that takes up less space and then converts it to video whenever you decide that you want that specific clip to be turned into video something like that yeah cool yeah yeah but i, mean, I still like, hate it it's right st- i know for still sure hate it <laughs> if we didn't have the issue of the switch only having 32 gigs to start with like i feel like they probably wouldn't mess with all that so another case for having more onboard storage being nice <laughs> because then they would change that up. But, I mean, at this point, Smash is going to do that for the rest of his existence, I'd imagine. I mean, they could patch it probably, but I doubt they would because it seems like it was also, pretty intentional. I mean, I have 400 gigabytes. Don't don't punish me for people that, <laughs> yep. that don't have SD cards. Yeah, could. I mean, if they could do, like, just a setting or something that you could toggle on or off even. Yeah, um, man. Just let, me, just let me showcase to the world how uh, good I am at this game. <laughs> 
<laughs> and let me show them when I'm going through these random phases of like, you know what? I'm picking up Richter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start playing as Falco and I'm going to start tearing up the interwebs. You know what I mean, Parker? Mm -hmm. I, I just want to let the world know. I know exactly what you mean from personal experience because I'm actually number one of all the Smash players um, exactly. across the world. So exactly. I really uh, I really resonate with that. I knew that you would understand yeah, my you know. plight. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Man. Uh, yeah, I've been playing some more Pokemon. I've been playing some more Pokemon. And I tried out the Pokemon Go integration stuff for the first time today. Oh, uh, you got the Fuchsia? Yeah, I got the Fuchsia. Um and yeah, it's, I mean, it's all right. I don't love the catching mechanics just in general. Uh, you know, I, it's fine, but I, yeah, don't absolutely adore it or anything. So it's one of those things where like, I'm going to use the Pokemon Go stuff for Pokedex purposes only. Um, but pretty yeah. soon a friend of mine's getting Let's Go Eevee anyway. So then I can just trade with him and all that. But it's one of those things where like, I was only planning on playing through it fairly casually and just getting to the end. But now that, especially because you can judge the Pokemon and get like, see your IVs and EVs and all that kind of stuff more easily. Uh, I'm probably going to go through and make sure to get at least one like great stats of every Pokemon because that's just the kind of person I am <laughs> where it's like as soon as I saw that as an option I did not care about IVs or EVs previous prior to this generation and now it's like oh but it makes me feel like it's very rewarding to have yeah. you know an actual good version of this Pokemon I feel like we'll be able to keep I, I think Pokemon Let's Go will probably be forward compatible. Nice. Uh, I mean, that hasn't been confirmed or anything like that. Right. But it just would seem weird for them not to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's not like they're opposed to being weird. But <laughs> yeah. Just have a, a feeling, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know what you mean. Honestly, I mean, I feel like if it's not then maybe that means it's that much more of a shake-up into Gen 4, which, I mean, Gen 4, Gen 8, which uh, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't argue with. That'd be fine. Yeah, but, so just like, you know what, nuke it all. You don't yep. get your Pokemon. Yep. This, you're on a deserted island. <laughs> you only it's like get Eventide the, Island of Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. You only get the 100 or so new Pokemon, and that's it. People yep. would be upset. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be down with it. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um. But I feel like they're really trying to steer into the Kanto skit, so I don't know about that. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Man. Um, but yeah, that's all I've been playing. You wanna you wanna get into the news? We got a bunch of stuff today. Yeah, we can get into the news. <sighs> all right. So everyone's listening probably knows this first one. Um it's probably gonna be the title card and everything. But Metroid Prime Four. Did you see this coming? <laughs> Metroid Prime 4, what is this? That yeah. sounds like a, a, a small little ambitious indie game. It's it's one of those, you know. They figured, they saw other people doing the Metroidvania thing, they're like, ah, we can do that. Um, but yeah, I, I woke up this morning and was on my way to work and saw a tweet that was like, Nintendo, and updated on a development progress of Metroid Prime 4. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Opened up the tweet as soon as it came up and every all the replies were like, people you know ecstatic or whatever just really happy because they hadn't actually watched the video yet yeah <laughs> and then proceeded to watch the video and then that so the rundown of the news bit is that metro prime 4 has been uh not just delayed but like nuked they're like nope pretty We're much not using any of this yeah it's not canceled which that's kind of what i was worried about mid video but it's getting just kind of starting again from the ground up who knows if even they're going to reuse any of the assets that they had worked on so far but it had gotten pretty far it was a uh, tanya takahashi um just like pretty much said it was not to the standards that we wanted it to be and so we're starting it from the beginning with retro um and that's that's about all we know so Wow. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, in terms of, like, what I think that means. Because, like, it could mm -hmm. mean a lot of things. It, right. it could mean what everybody's assuming it means. And it's like, oh, man, I just want to see this game. It was probably a garbage. Like, it's probably a dumpster fire, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but a big part of me feels like something that's equally as plausible is it just wasn't metroid right you know yeah so nintendo looked at this and was like or metroid prime even specifically mm -hmm. 
Uh, and because Metro Prime is this very like Western thing, because it was developed in Austin, Texas, <laughs> you know, as West like, as it gets. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like that's 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 America mm-hmm. uh, all day. So, like, I can I can see them on that end wanting to have this like super like Western property or Westernized property, I mm-hmm. should say, at this point. Because uh, they don't really have anything like that. Like, all their games are, in essence, a JRPG. <laughs> right. You know, with, like, the only real exception being, like, Mario Platformers and Smash Brothers. Yeah. yeah, like, but pretty much everything else can be boiled down <laughs> to a JRPG. Like, even Zelda is, like, borderline a JRPG. Mm. Yeah. No, it it is interesting. Um, you said something that made me think of something, and I completely forgot it, but... The yeah, there wasn't. So I mean, it seems like either it's a, a trash, a dumpster fire, like you were saying. I doubt it's an actual dumpster fire. But the thing is, like, even if it was the quality exactly of Metroid Other M, that that wouldn't. You know, that's like that's not a dumpster it's fire not the of a game. Thing in the world. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's a game, but it's not what people wanted. And there's there's flaws with it for sure. But it's you know. It's it's a game and that if it came out for any other franchise by any other company, they'd be like, yeah, that was fine. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that speaks to why I think that it might have not been because it was necessarily bad. Right. I think they just took notes when they saw Federation Force. Yep. And Federation Force was off the heels of Other M, which was another game where it's like, mm-hmm. thanks, I hate it. You know, like that <laughs> whole thing. Um, yeah. Which is like, neither one of those games are bad. Mm-hmm. They're just not what people want yep. out of Metroid. So Nintendo looks at them and they're like, hmm, you know, like, this, what are what are we doing here you yeah. know like the last two games are hated by our fan ba- or the, the like the fan base of this franchise so why though like mm-hmm. why are we going to do this again like we need to make something that we think that this fan base is going to love um or it could even go beyond that where it's like nah 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 maybe it was metroid and maybe that's all it was mm, it was like yeah. oh no this is metroid we don't need that Metroid, we tried that, doesn't sell well. We hmm. want this big juggernaut franchise. We want to have a Breath of the Wild on our hands. Yep. Where it's like, uh, do, do people like Zelda? Sure. You know, did Zelda do good? Sure. But it wasn't doing Mario numbers. Breath of the Wild did Mario numbers. And that's because they took what Zelda was and said, okay, uh, let's make this for the modern day. Let's westernize it a little bit because that's more global, which is kind of weird. Um, <laughs> when you westernize something, it like it usually has this like bigger effect on it uh-huh. um, in terms of like sales. I guess that's because the biggest market uh, in terms of like console gaming is the Western market. Right. Uh, so maybe that's why uh, that could be another explanation for it is just that they didn't think it was a big enough game. Um, Mm -hmm. It could have been that the development was just too disjointed because I'm hearing that the development in this game was approached less like a Nintendo game where it's like this like really insular thing where uh, maybe a couple of their studios are like all hands on deck on it. And it was more of like a Ubisoft situation where it's like, all right, uh, you in Singapore, you work on this part. You in Austin, you work on this part. You in Tokyo, you you work on this part. You Mm -hmm. know, like people all over the globe working on this one project. Um, and like with different parts and have different assignments on that. And some people are turning in great stuff and then other people are turning in like, what is this? Like, how's, <laughs> you know? So it's like, that. that's another thing that I, I feel like could be a good explanation for why they uh, nuked it. Yeah. No, yeah, all of those things. I mean, I feel like, and your point to the Western games being more popular too, I think something in that is that Western games are oftentimes less stylized, I guess you could say, where um, they, I mean, obviously there's an aspect of gameplay that falls into that, but just as far as like, you know, curb appeal and what the game actually looks like, a lot of times Western games are more going for just a standard kind of look that looks a bit more based in reality as opposed to being kind of more anime based or something like that, which is great. But a lot of times just based off initial impressions, if somebody just decided that they don't like anime based stuff or, you know, that kind of art style, then they just be turned off from the get go, even though they might love the game itself. So I think there's, you know, some of that that plays into it too, if, if that's the case, but yeah, it could be any number of things. I'm really curious when we'll find out what actually 
happened or if that's something that like I don't know if we ever will I Granted, know I, I, well not from Nintendo I don't think Nintendo's gonna be like no, hey right. you know what I agree <laughs> this is what happened <laughs> Singapore they were pulling their weight they suck you know like, <laughs> we had to give it the we had to give it the retro you know they uh-huh. weren't pulling their weight uh, I doubt that they would do that right um, but maybe somebody like Liam Robertson will that's what I was thinking because you know yeah. like he's, he's kind of obsessed with everything that has to do with the retro so uh-huh. maybe he'll uh, he'll uncover that story yeah I really hope so but yeah I've got man a lot of thoughts that are speculation based off of just this news in and of itself the first thing is just huge props to Nintendo for actually saying something about it and I have some theories of why they might have actually said something about it versus versus just left it you know and just let us find out silent for the yeah. next four years right exactly so um so yeah that that's one thing um and but so uh, before I get into my theories of why that is like the like to dislike ratio on the video and just everybody's reaction it seems like mo- for the most Polar part opposite from just, Federation just, Force. yeah super positive which is like even compared to like just their NES game video trailers every yeah. month where mm-hmm. it'll you know show what games like actual games that you're getting. And people are really mad about those. And same for Federation Force. Yeah, exactly. It's like, here's a game that you're getting. And people are like, no. And this is them saying, hey, you're not going to get this game right now. But people are like, pretty much just fine with it. You know, I mean, disappointed for sure. But, you know, happy still at the overall idea, which is just interesting to see that. Right. Yeah. Um, Agreed. So, yeah, that thing. But so, okay. So some of my theories in any case for why they went ahead and told us anyway as opposed to just not telling us and letting us find out the hard way in five years when we actually end up seeing it i'm kind of surprised as of our recording of mm-hmm. this yep. this session this video has seven hundred thousand views for metroidness great that's cra- it's number three on trending <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. It has 86,000 likes, 2.8 thousand dislikes. Yep. That's like a four to one or something like that. Or 40, sorry, 40 to one ratio, which is That's incredible. Crazy. I think it just goes to show too. I mean, just the, like the honesty and transparency of, of that goes such a long way. And I feel like so many other companies don't do that. And again, maybe even Nintendo wouldn't have done that if there were other circumstances or whatever, but they did and they disabled the comments on their video which i think is really funny because like obviously they were prepared for huge backlash and it didn't really happen it would be funnier if they turned them back on (laughs) where it's like you know what people are happy about this turn the comments back on (laughs) yeah exactly because that would kind of go to show that that's exactly why they turned them off in the first place (sighs) yeah but man he just seems so heartfelt in that video too which was you know Nice. I mean, you could fake that theoretically, but I, That's true. I think he didn't. I don't know. Um, but so my theory in any case as to why maybe they went ahead and did it besides just out of, you know, being nice and honest people or whatever is that at this point, if they hadn't given this announcement and we saw a Metroid Prime trilogy trailer, whenever that would have been, um, So whether that's, you know, in a direct coming up within a week or two or in a direct way down the road or something like that, if that were to happen and we still thought Metroid Prime 4 was on the way, the number of people I think that would see it and be like, wow, this looks so good and immediately think that it's Metroid Prime 4 or even not like think that it's Metroid Prime 4 because it looks so amazing or something, but just think that, you know, because this is coming out, so now we're going to also learn more about Metro Prime 4, and then we don't, you know, kind of like in a Bayonetta yeah. situation. I, th- I think that one is the more likely thing. Right. Because people are, you know, Parker, just between me and you, <laughs> nobody's hearing this. Nobody. You know, just me and you. Man, nobody thanks hears. for your candor, and yeah. You know what I mean? Nobody's mm. going to hear this. No. People are stupid, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, they're, they're, they're real dumb, but I don't think they're that dumb, right. where it's like, oh, this is Metro Prime 1 through 3, and it's, it's no that's not what it is it's metro prime 4 and we don't know that yep. we don't know any better you know mm-hmm. how are we supposed to know that this isn't <laughs> metro prime 3 we've never had this game mm-hmm. <laughs> you know um so i i don't think that th- that is the reason but i definitely yep. think it, it could be the latter where mm-hmm. they're like uh 
Okay, we got some Metroid Prime Trilogy news. Next up, Prime 4, and then they move <laughs> on to like Pikmin or something. And you're like, what? Yeah, because I think at that point, just anything would be a disappointment. Like when you've got your mind set on something, like it's just disappointing to find out something different. So like, yeah, if you if we heard about the trilogy and then turned out that there was no Metro Prime 4 to follow it up, that would just be like super disheartening or, or whatever. And I feel like, I mean, it's a similar situation too, honestly, to why they announced it in the first place was so that they could put out um, uh, Metroid. Goodness gracious. What was the, the 3DS game called? Federation Force. No, the more recent than that, the 2D one, the remake of Metroid oh, 2. Oh, uh, Samus, Samus Returns. Returns. That's right, yep. Um, when they put that out, which is, they only announced that after they'd already announced Metroid Prime 4, because yeah. you know people would have been real mad if they just heard about Samus Returns, a remake of an older Metroid side-scrolling game, and then you know didn't get something else. Right. Um, so I feel like for similar reasons, they you know went ahead and broke the news so that we didn't have to <laughs> to endure that i don't know also the fact that they did it on a friday <laughs> where they're just like you know what yep it's the end of the week we don't have to hear about <laughs> this people aren't and in the event that people like this would be received negatively it's right. a good idea to do that at the end of the news cycle rather than at the beginning <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um, so that that was a, a calculated move on their part as well <laughs> yep i mean and this this goes into a lot of speculation that could be entirely wrong and we'll never find out if it's if it's true or not but um, well, it, it, some, you know, rumors, insider knowledge kind of stuff makes it sound like in any case, this was a super late decision. And that like, when we heard about Metroid Prime Trilogy showing up at the Game Awards, like it was supposed to be there, but then probably as this, they were like mulling over whether or not this, I guess, would, um, whether they'd have to you know make this decision or not and completely scrap Metroid Prime 4 as it is. And when they decided that is when they also then pushed back the Metro Prime Trilogy announcement from the Game Awards. Um, I wonder if Jeff Keighley uh, commented on this. Because uh, <laughs> I think him not commenting on it is indicative of something. <laughs> yeah. Has he said anything? Have you? I, I haven't looked or anything. I'm, I'm checking right now. Yep. Um, his last tweet was half an hour ago. Doesn't have anything to do with Metro. Mm. Um, yep. Yeah, no. Doesn't look like he said anything yep. about Metroid Prime. Which I mean, at that point too, it's. I mean, if this has been, I'd imagine this is kind of one of those decisions that's been weighing heavy on them for you know theoretically since uh, November or something. Whenever they decided that, if that's the case, to where maybe even we technically were supposed to get a direct back earlier this month like when yoshi we basically did oh yeah exactly. well that's the thing like all those games maybe those were supposed to kind of be in directs and they were like yeah. well yeah well we're just good announce them anyway like yoshi and stuff you know i could have still seen that being one but maybe not right. i don't know yeah it's it's interesting um so i guess another question or thought or whatever what do you think this means for the possibility of Star Fox Grand Prix and the current like current games that Retro is working on. Um, yeah. How do you think this does or doesn't impact I, I that? I don't know because we never saw it, so I don't know how far along it was. Like if it was like close mm -hmm. to being out the door, then I could see them like finishing that up and then releasing that sometime this year. Yep. But if they were like midway through it and the game wasn't close to being released, I can see them canning it. Because yeah. we all know, Retro is not above canceling a game. <laughs> yeah. So I, I could imagine that they just, they got the the, uh, the call for this and said, mm -hmm. hey, uh, remember how we said that uh, we didn't need you for Metroid Prime 4? Uh, change your minds. Take, take see backsies. <laughs> and then Retro is like, well, we got this Star Fox thing. And mm -hmm. Nintendo's like, people don't care about Star Fox. Look at, <laughs> look at Star Fox Zero. So let me show you the MPD for Star Fox Zero <laughs> and I'm going to let you know that nobody cares about Star Fox. Uh -huh. And then Retro's like, you know what? You got a good point. Yep. Give us Metroid. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think you're right. It de it definitely depends just on how far along they are with that. Because at this point, like we officially know that Retro is working on Metro Prime Four, so they're going to be held accountable to that, as opposed to 
Star Fox Grand Prix, if it even, you know, is what we hear it is or whatever, that yeah. we don't technically know anything official. So, like, they can't really be held to that. They could cancel it as much as they want. But right. I feel like if that game doesn't come out this year or, like, super early next year, then it it's not happening. It just doesn't exist. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's it. <laughs> so... Yeah, I don't know. I'm curious. And like there was there was a lot of tweets that just happened throughout the day today that seemed to point to little bits of information or whatever, where uh, some guy that was an employee of I don't have his name anymore. Uh, nope. I've, whatever. Doesn't matter. I don't know his name, um, but he was a former employee of Retros and he tweeted out something to the effect of like, so what does this mean happened to that game that I was working on back in August 2015, which I don't know. Wow. Was that a canceled game or was that Star Fox Grand Prix or was that something different? And so it did sound, see, it sounds like retro had a lot of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, given their history, yep. <laughs> it would not surprise me if they had several projects and they can all of them. Right. So and they I, obviously I, found out about this. It sounds like in like December, because there's a bunch of uh, job openings that opened up in December. Yeah. Man, it's and a lot of people are trying to use that. Like, well, oh, as always, whenever a job <laughs> listing opens up for a game developer, like, what are they working on? You know, it's mm-hmm. like, man, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, At least we we don't. I don't gotta keep like semi annually tweeting retro studios with <laughs> eyeball emojis. Like, hey, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> I mean, now they'll let know. you know. They haven't DM'd you, just let you know. I, you know, I, I just think that. You just can't my talk tweets, about it. They've been getting lost in the mail, you know what I mean? Nah, yeah. yeah my happens. tweets, they, they haven't been getting them. The, the Yours? Twitter no. mailman didn't. Uh, <laughs> he got mixed up. He said it was the wrong people, you know? Yeah. Um, so here's here's another question. So, okay. So, yeah, maybe Metro Prime Trilogy probably, it sounds like, still had been planned to come out first half of this year from what. Uh, insiders have maybe said or whatever do you think between now and the forever away that metroid prime 4 is do you think we would see another 2d metroid come out um probably closer Mm -hmm. to uh when this one comes out i don't know if it'll be a new one maybe like a remake maybe like a super metroid remake yep that would be awesome because that's a great game. <laughs> or just, you know, Super Metroid on Nintendo Switch Online. <laughs> yeah, that would be very cool. Um, they like doubling yeah. up on announcements in that way where it's like, here's this game. And also, here's another one of those games, but slightly different. Yep. So I could see them being like, hey, uh, here's the SNES game. And also, we're going to release the Metro Prime trilogy. So you can see where Samus went after Super Metroid. Here uh-huh. you go. No, I honestly, I mean, we'll, we're going to be talking a little bit about people have some Q&As regarding direct and stuff like that. I I still, I don't have any inside information whatsoever. I'm just a random dude. But again, like it would make sense to me that it happens before, like Tuesday maybe, before um, uh, the financial, you know, uh, <laughs> that thing with the finances and all that stuff the financial <laughs> review of q3 but especially because they announced this thing if metro prime trilogy is getting announced then they would want to get this knocked out of the way and like you said on friday makes sense because it's a weekend it's like they don't have to deal with the consequences um but then also that there's enough time to kind of get over it so that by the time we see metro prime trilogy on t- tuesday theoretically just completely speculative that it wouldn't sting quite as much as if we saw it like the day after they let us know that four was getting canned as it was i don't know yeah i'm trying to see i I don't think that they have this like publicly available is how many people work at retro Hmm. so we can try to gauge like how many things are that could they potentially be working on yeah uh but they don't have that information available yeah i think the same guy that tweeted out that august 2015 thing um made it sound like they only really have enough people to work on one big game at a time so I, don't know. I mean, but again, that was August 2015. Which would go against but, a lot of stuff that we've heard. <laughs> right. So I don't, I, I don't yeah. Know. So, and I mean, they have been hiring, so, you know, who's to say? And also, it's it it wasn't really made clear if Nintendo is working 
in conjunction with retro where like some of their people are staying on or if it's going a hundred percent to retro or if you know it like it kind of sounds like hold on, uh it sounded like it was going a hundred percent to retro but i feel like they would also make it sound like that just so that there was more confidence in it <laughs> if nothing yeah. else that's true this so, is a yeah. good point yep but the last tidbit of information on that, again, rumorish, is that apparently the trilogy actually has been done for a little while. Sort of like how we heard earlier this week that Yoshi um, Crafted World has actually been done since December and is just hanging out and waiting around. <laughs> so, yeah, curious uh, on that if that's the case. But it's still a rumor. So, man, I don't know. I'm I'm super, honestly, overall... <laughs> My my thoughts on this are that I'm excited about it just because, I don't know, it's going to retro. And, like, we know that it's going to be a better game for it, all things considered. You know, not that we thought, not that we knew that it was going to be a bad game beforehand, but now we know that it would have been. So, or that we knew, we know it would have been a not amazing game in any case. So, hopefully right. now... Um, that'll be good and also like i've said before i haven't played all the prime games so at least it'll let me personally not get super burnt out on them you know where all four of them come out for me to play in like the span of a year or something yeah (laughs) i wonder if like something that would i think instill confidence in a lot of like you know like the the harder core you you know like the nitty-gritty people the people that know how many people work at next level games yeah (laughs) like uh is if they start to hear that like former retro people have come back to work on metroid i wonder Mm. how uh likely that is because we have seen that happen with other studios like valve like yeah. recently a lot of like half-life writers and stuff like that have went back to valve so people are like uh what <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> what is that for yeah that's interesting yeah that would be really cool just to see that like the old gang's getting back together to to make you know one last big hurrah or whatever no, that'd be how dare you say one last one last big hurrah until the next one is you oh, didn't okay. let me finish my that's sentence better. aj you always that's do better. this to me <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. And then you think probably comes out 2022, 2023, something like that. Yeah, yeah. something like that. So, uh, I, don't, yeah. I don't know when, like, I mean, nobody knows. We don't know when they wrote them in for this. Right, yeah. So, uh, hey, I mean, it's definitely not this year. 100%. <laughs> we know that much. <laughs> it's definitely not this year. Yeah. But maybe 2020, yeah. maybe 2022. Mm-hmm. You don't know. You don't know. Who knows? Maybe 2025 on a Nintendo swap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the question. Is this going to be the last game to come out on the Switch? Is this going to be the first game to come out on the next console? Or is it still going to be in the middle of the console generation? Um, which, uh, on that note, Furukawa, in an in interview... I Okay, I've got to say, I love Furukawa. How somebody will ask him a question like, Hey, what would you eat for breakfast? And he'll like answer that question and then also give up some completely unrelated information that other people (laughs) have been wanting to know but haven't actually asked about kind of a thing um so in an interview here here, i'll just read what he said um could you tell us how your goal is going for the switch to sell 20 million units within the fiscal year which is a question that make we've all asked or whatever or no uh it's an extremely ambitious but worthwhile achievement so we will maintain this goal nintendo switch is our primary sales objective and we are not considering a successor or priced cut at this time which like that last bit yeah (laughs) (laughs) that's not what you were asked man (sighs) but it's still interesting tidbits so yeah i don't know any thoughts on that this this was his equivalent of being like I want guac. I know it's extra. <laughs> that is that situation. That's what he. That's what he was doing. <laughs> that's a perfect analogy. Just like I know you're gonna ask, so let me just go ahead and <laughs> finish the thought for you. I think a lot of people are like taking this and running with it, right? Where they're like, "Oh, he said there's no no uh, switch uh, successor mm-hmm. in the works." Like that. That means that we're not going to get the 2019 revision or whatever. Since when did they call the new 3DS a successor to the 3DS? Right. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, and even at that, he's also very liable to just kind of fib about it anyway. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, true. That's uh, true. Yeah. Because um, it's like, mm-hmm. it's it's all semantics, you right. know, where it's like when for the longest time, like 20, 2011, 
Nintendo being like, nah, we're not working on the HD Wii. Because <laughs> they're not. You're right. They're not working on the HD Wii. They're working on the Wii U that yeah. just so happens to be an HD console mm-hmm. with the Wii branding. You right. Know? <laughs> like, it's like, they didn't lie. <laughs> they just didn't tell the whole truth. Yeah. <laughs> No, exactly. And that's, I mean, and it makes sense also that he would want to kind of advertise this information because they're trying to get a push before the end of, you know, this fiscal year. So it's kind of him being like, I guess. Look, we're trying to sell 20 million of these things. Don't wait it out. Yes, exactly. Don't wait for the next one. Just buy this one. (laughs) Yeah. Which, I mean, we've talked about a bunch of times. So, like, it's if you want a Switch, just go ahead and get a Switch. Like, there's a bunch of games coming out this year. Worst case scenario, if something else comes out, just trade it in. Like, whatever that'll be fine <laughs> yeah so. man you you had the extra time you know like you had a good six seven months mm-hmm. on everybody else if you buy it now yep yeah exactly so that was a. Uh, that was interesting. But yeah, so they were trying to hit, you know, a bunch of sales goals and stuff, but they did meet some they got a lot closer to that um as we got the NPD results for 2018, which is as we all know the um U.S. sales, so that's just within the U.S. and only retail. Um, so, well, eh, kind of, um, but I mean, for phys- for hardware, that's only going to be retail because you can't buy, you know, digital I can't consoles. A Nintendo <laughs> Switch. Sorry, man. I've been lied to all yeah. my life. I mean, I guess you can download an emulator, but some versions of that Jesus is, Christ. you know, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that stuff. Um, yeah, there was a bunch of yeah. I mean, Switch did good. What surprise, surprise? Who would have ever called that in oh, a video, yeah. no less? It's it's funny too. So all this information pretty much comes from Matt Piscatella, um, who's an NPD good follow on Twitter. Everybody follow him on Twitter. Yeah, seriously. And it's funny too. He tweeted out pretty much about the fe- or he had some tweet that was something to the effect of like, "So is everybody going to apologize to me now that like was you know trashing me for saying that the Switch was going to win 2018 sales Yo, in the states?" I'm with them. Yeah, I'm with them. I'm with them. You know how many comments I've had to deal with mm-hmm. on my video about Nintendo Switch game that being the best year for Nintendo Switch games till 2019. Yep. Uh, I, I'm expecting a formal <laughs> apology from all like 800 at least of you that are like you're crazy. Nintendo Switch games are falling off. Mm-hmm. Blah blah z blah blah blah. Meanwhile, they just released their fastest selling one ever. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm but a man, Parker. I have uh, reasonable expectations, and I expect for everybody to have a, a gift basket sent to me promptly. I heard gift basket at first, like just GIF, like they were just sending you a bunch of memes. <laughs> I mean, hey, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, make the rules. So mm-hmm. if you want to, if that's what your choice for my basket, uh, then, you know, send that. Yep. A bunch of apologetic looking puppies or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It'll work. <laughs> yeah. No. So they did. They did great. I, yeah, and I watched a, a YouTube video that somebody tweeted out that they were like, well, this didn't age well, pretty much. And it was predicting pretty much that the Switch was going to, you know, crumble and die in 2018. But it was posted in, like, September 2017, where it's like, dude, how how do you think you're going to know literally anything at all? I mean, we didn't find out pretty much anything yeah, about 2018. You know, you know he felt dumb <laughs> when Mario Odyssey <laughs> sold 10 million copies yep. in, like three months or something like that like something insane <laughs> i know you know he Dude immediately like, oh, felt dumb man. there was no even there was not even a point in trying to shame him now because yep. he already was feeling dumb <laughs> from the the months that followed immediately after that yeah man because it just sold really really well and everybody likes it so that's you know i mean i mean there's still some fanboys and haters and stuff like that but you know whatever um i feel like the general like consensus amongst like pundits such as ourselves Mm -hmm. on the internet uh (laughs) other than ourselves i guess and uh bob bob's pretty uh optimistic about the switch yep most people seem to think like oh switch is falling off and blah you know like izzy right friend of the show izzy uh 
no noted uh stupid person also <laughs> that uh, he's he posted a video and like in like the description or in, in like his tweet or whatever he was basically like this you know the switch is like in a rough patch and i'm like what <laughs> how in what world Man, you know it's like i mean I, and you know him from you know behind the scenes like does he th- sincerely believe that too I, I think that a lot of it is like misplaced disappointment mm, personally yeah. right. you know where it's like he thinks that the switch is in a rough patch because it's not getting all these crazy big games that he personally like he doesn't yeah. like smash brothers mm. so of course like as somebody that doesn't like smash brothers their biggest game of the year being smash brothers is like eh, whatever yeah you know but for literally everybody else, it's like, oh, my God, this is the best thing. <laughs> uh, so, I, I mean, I can't completely fault him, but at the same time, he's dumb. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, there's something to be said, too, where, like, I I don't care about Call of Duty at all. But right. there's something to be said where I would feel good about, and it's, it's kind of dumb and fanboyish or whatever to even feel this way, but at the same time, there's legitimacy to it, where if in the next Nintendo Direct, I mean... Uh, E3, let's say, whatever. Um, they showed Call of Duty was coming to every console, including Switch. I'd feel like a little bit of personal success because it's like, yeah, that thing that I believe in, other things are believing in it too, or whatever. But right. like, that also doesn't really mean, as long you know, I'm playing games on it every week for sure, every day for the most part, and am having a good time with it. So, like, at that point, really, it doesn't, and it's selling well, so it's going to keep getting support. So, that's. No, it's not doomed. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it, it's like, and I feel like I'm really in a weird position in terms of like uh, how much I want the Switch to succeed because yep. it's like, on one end, it's like, I'm not a stockholder of Nintendo. I don't financially benefit from them succeeding, but at the same time, I kind of do mm, because yeah, totally. if me as somebody that they send things to be like, hey, uh, evangelize for us, <laughs> you know, basically, uh-huh. uh, and it, everything does terribly, that that makes it seem like them putting in that effort uh, and, and believing in creators like me to be like, hey, talk about this thing. Mm-hmm. Um and it doesn't do anything, why would they do it anymore? Yeah. You know, where it's like, hey, we're spending all this money and resources sending you these products so you can talk about them and nobody's buying them. Right. You know, so it's like, yeah. on, on that end, it's like... Um, I mean, your livelihood at this point legitimately depends on that, even more than somebody with stocks in them, I feel like, because typically, you know, money that you have in stocks and invested is extra money to some degree you know where right. it's unless you're like a stock trader by trade which i don't even understand that to be yeah. honest but you know otherwise that's like oh that's you know my uh ideally my piggy bank that's eventually gonna get bigger or something but for you yeah. it legitimately i mean if it's all doom and gloom i guess there's something <laughs> there's something, there's something there for a little there bit too. you know but yeah, eventually yeah, yeah. that'll kind of trickle but down as, as well somebody that is also like a fan of theirs yep. like i don't want to do that no, you know like totally. I, I don't hesitate to be like uh okay i played this game and i don't like it yep like we, we all know this when i don't like a game <laughs> everybody knows it refer back to the last episode about travis strikes again yeah. hashtag free product hashtag <laughs> provided by nintendo i don't like the game yep. <laughs> you know but at the same time like i, I don't want my whole brand to be like i mean it's no mario sucks. plus rabbits you know you'll oh uh, you'll give it that <laughs> oh my god oh my god uh, yeah <laughs> see well, to be fair you know like i i will say mm-hmm. that i can understand the gameplay elements yep uh being something that people like with uh the stupid <laughs> rabbits game uh but travis strikes again right yeah that's it, it's nah. definitely different on that front where i i more mean as you i mean as you know but maybe listeners don't that i'm poking fun at the fact that you have a problem more thematically with mario yeah. plus rabbits than anything else whereas right. i myself played it finished it and enjoy it but yeah, it's not a bad game you're you two are what we like to call one of them dumb kids <laughs> you're, you know I mean? you're welcome uh, thank you very much <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. So, but it's, I mean, there's something just good about seeing, you know, the consoles that you like or the things that you care about. It's like when you have a favorite for- sports team and they do well. Um, I have a favorite fort. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you wouldn't believe it's it's not in Fortnite because I don't play the game yep. <laughs> at all. Yeah, it's, uh, man, I, this is a, a very much an aside and a tangent, but I went out to a work dinner with uh, my 
my bosses work remote and are um, were in town this week. And so I was hanging out with them and other coworkers of mine and stuff. And I was standing in a group of some guys that were all talking sports. Mm-hmm. And I had literally no words to say. <laughs> like, I, I'm a good listener and like just kind of standing there, bebopping along and like, yeah, cool. Nice. Uh-huh. Baseball. Totally. But had zero words to say the whole time. Yeah. And it was uh, it was very You awkward. could be like, hey, uh, you know, that sp- you know, what sport I like. I like uh, that sport called Rocket League. You ever see that sport? <laughs> Great sport. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's one of them sports ball ones, but where you drive real fast. Yeah, you ever yeah. played a sport? Who's your favorite pro uh, Rocket League player? You know, that's interesting. That game never really... I, I mean, it hasn't got... It's obviously super popular, but, like, I don't know of any specific, like, streamers of it that got popular in the same way that... Ninja. Yeah, there's the no ninjas ninja. of Rocket exactly, League. Exactly, <laughs> right. Whereas I feel, you know, there's Dr. Disrespect for PUBG and some other things or whatever. So, yeah, like Zero for Smash. Right, exactly. So that's interesting. Right. I don't know. Maybe there are people like that, but yeah, maybe not. Um, this is, That was a tangent within a tangent. So many tangents. It's great. Uh, but yeah, so Switch, just a couple factoids. I'll just read through them, and if we want to touch on any, then we can. But um, some of the kind of top-hitting ones are... That Switch finishes year as the top hardware platform for 2018 in the U.S. Uh, yeah, which honestly it wasn't lined up to. I don't think by the end of November. So December really actually was what pushed it over the edge. Um, yeah, I mean that's what Nintendo said. Yeah, right. <laughs> Nintendo exactly. was basically like, "Hey, man, uh, this little stint throughout the year, like this last little pocket, mm-hmm. that's 60% of our business. Yep. And people were like, yeah, 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 whatever. And they're like, no, <laughs> no, no, seriously. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's it's funny to me to hear too when there's a bunch of, I don't know, other people talking or whatever who were saying that they didn't think Smash Bros. was a system seller. And to some degree, I understand why they say that because there's been times in the past where, like with the Wii U, it I mean, it it was a system seller in that like systems sold because of it, but they didn't sell like at the degree that you know it's people didn't buy Wii U just because of Smash. Yeah, the Wii U didn't become like successful off the back of Smash. Right, but But I don't think a system seller in that way exists. You know, right? Like the system itself isn't appealing at all. (laughs) Right, right. Super Mario sixty four. That's a system seller, Mm -hmm. but the sixty four didn't fly off the shelves either. You know, right? Um, It certainly sold better than the Wii U, but. That aside, it took more than just Mario 64 to do that. And it takes more than what Uncharted 4 to sell PlayStation 4s. Doesn't mean that Uncharted 4 is not a system seller. Yep. No, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I remember playing Brawl in college and being really excited for the premise of like, oh, there's a new console that's going to be unveiled and there's going to be a Smash on it. And then right. when they unveiled the Wii U, I first of all, Smash wasn't announced right away. If it was, I probably actually would have bought it. I think it, it was. I think that they announced it, but they didn't. It was like, it was like a, a thing of Sakurai was already working on uh, Kid Icarus Uprising. Interesting. So um, they just said like he, it's gonna be coming eventually, kind of thing. They basically murdered Sakurai's child live on stage, or threatened to murder it um, live on stage, and said, "Hey, uh, we have your kid, uh, and we plan to kill it <laughs> unless you um, come up here and save his life." And Sakurai saw that, and he was like, "You know what? Oh I, I guess, I guess, I got to do it." You know, like <laughs> you said, you're going to kill him. I got, I got to make this game, yeah, because <laughs> I don't want him to die. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. so his kid being Smash or Kid Icarus in this situation? Smash, I Smash Brothers. Okay, cool. Smash yeah. Brothers. Them saying like, "Hey, we're going to make this game whether you want us to or not." Right. And Sakurai's like, "Nah, I don't want you to do that because I don't think you're going to make it good." Yeah. Um. <laughs> so then they. He, he, that's how he got signed on. It was basically like, we're just cool. we're making this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Sakurai's like, all right, fine. Yep. I'll do it. Yeah. I don't feel like they had to do all that, though, which is why they didn't do it this time Honestly, around. They yeah. just went up to him. But right, exactly. That and time, like, yeah. they, 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 uh, they fell for his bluff because mm-hmm. you know Sakura. Every single time he works on a Smash Brothers game, he's like, "I'm never doing anything ever, <laughs> ever again." You're right? Never ask me to do anything. And then Nintendo just this time was like, "Maybe he's serious this time, guys." <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, exactly. And so, yeah, I think Nintendo. Uh, honestly, if they had been more, I don't know, because if they did announce it right at the beginning, I guess I just like. 
because I definitely didn't feel like they announced it, which in they that didn't case... They make a big deal out exactly, of it. Exactly, right. It was like a thing of, hey, here's the Wii U with the circle pads on it. Yeah. Not even the analogs, not the clickable sticks and stuff like that. Here's this. We're going to have Smash Brothers on it. Yep. We don't have a logo for that Smash Brothers. We're just going to... We're making a Smash Brothers right. game. Yeah. It, it, that was basically all it was. And mm-hmm. then three years later, <laughs> or whatever, mm-hmm. we got the Smash Brothers game. Yep. So... Yeah. I think it was three years because Smash Bros. came out in what 2014. I think it, uh, yeah. The Wii U was revealed like late 2011. Yeah. So yeah, something I think like that. It was three years later. Yep. Um, moving on with some of the stats of sorts. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe finishes 2018 as the second best-selling racing game of all time, trailing only Mario Kart Wii, which has 37 like million. Is, <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is, or at least how this was written is misleading mm. i think they mean mario kart 8 is including oh so including both the Wii sense. U version and yep. also the switch because i tried to find a list of like other best-selling racing games and like uh, from the little bit of research i did i didn't find anything else right off the bat like so. gran turismo sell well traditionally sells like crazy yeah <laughs> the last game uh sport or whatever it's called did not sell very well mm-hmm. um but sold pretty well gotcha so you think they're including yeah both the because the wii u had what eight million on it yeah and then Uh we've got i mean a bunch now because all the bundles that sold in december too so i mean it really it is a lot for sure but um but yeah if you're including both of those in there then that makes it up to like 20 plus million instead of the i don't know 13 plus million that it probably actually is which again still is awesome okay so yeah the best-selling gran turismo game sold uh, that over much? 17 million over okay, 17 wow, yeah. million uh and then there's like multiple yeah <laughs> so the uh they have for whatever reason they had the first three like compiled together mm-hmm. and their global sales combined is 35 million but individually the first one 10 million 9 million 14 million so i'm pretty sure like 14 million i don't know maybe uh mario kart 8 deluxe sold more than that by by now but yep. i don't know i don't know about that um but definitely not more than 17 million right it definitely did not pass 17 million yep like that would be insane <laughs> honestly i feel like europe is helping that game more than it helps most yeah, other nintendo like games europe. it's like all europe yeah oh you're talking about uh mario kart specifically yeah yeah for mario kart oh, like because yeah, 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 yeah. a lot of other nintendo games i feel like that's kind of where that you know they do pretty well in the u.s or japan or both but then europe they kind of like fall flat a little bit um i, feel, I mean they're deep in the sports games if yeah gran turismo is any indication yep exactly <laughs> because out of that like what gran turismo 4 mm-hmm. out of that 17 million figure 10 million of it <laughs> is europe goodness <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy that is crazy yep and uh, yes, yeah, so some more figures too. For the first time since 2009, Nintendo is the highest software re- revenue generating publisher of the year. Good job, Nintendo. Yeah. And then another another 2009 stat, um, Switch generated the highest December month hardware dollar sales for a single platform since the Wii in December 29, 2009. Which is crazy. That is crazy. Like, it's crazy how much they would have had to sell to do that. Yep. Because the play, like, we're, we're thinking PlayStation 4 at launch, $400. Yeah, right. So a hundred dollars more mm-hmm. than what the Nintendo Switch is currently. Yep. So that means not only did it sell at least whatever play because at the time when PlayStation Four first came out, it's like meteoric sales, like set, setting records and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Four hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it, it's like for them to be able to surpass that, and for them to be able to pr- surpass that with the Wii just puts that in the perspective too, because it's like mm-hmm. the Wii was two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah that's crazy yeah no it's it's insane i'm curious to see too because they launch aligned with i think the ps4 and xbox one um in the 22 months that it's been out the switch sold like 22 percent more than the ps4 has at the same you know at 22 months and like 36 yeah, yeah. percent more than the xbox one had in the same amount of time which it's just doing phenomenal and then the last which that's that yeah. surprises me about the the xbox one it doesn't surprise me as much with the playstation 4 because that number just sounds right mm-hmm. but the xbox one sold more than i thought yeah <laughs> because uh they made it sound like around that time that 
uh, Xbox One was losing out to PlayStation Four uh, two to one. Oh wow! Yeah, and that's not what that number is. Right? You know? no, like, totally. That's not a two to one gap. Uh, so I mean, I guess if it's it could be kind of close. I mean, if it's twenty two percent versus thirty six percent, then that's like almost two to one. Yeah, Cause it, it's close. But still, but... yeah, no, it's. Um, I agree. I thought that the Xbox One would have been down lower than that, just because it, you know, yeah. uh, made it sound like it wasn't doing quite as well. But right. although I feel like recently it's been doing a whole lot better for, I mean, a lot of reasons, sales and yeah, all that it's stuff. Like in but second place for the yeah. uh, for December. Yeah, exactly. And Which I, again, I mean, a lot of, a lot of people like you know like PlayStation fans are going to point out the fact that it's like, well, everybody already has a PlayStation Four. Right. <laughs> uh, so that that could be a big part of it. Yep. But at the same time, it's like the PlayStation Four is first of all they don't last forever. Right. <laughs> I'm sure that if you have play, if you have a launch PlayStation Four, it sounds like a jet engine. You need to get a new one. <laughs> Buy a new one immediately. Yep. Like they're, they're giving them away at this point. Yeah. Two hundred dollars. So go buy the PlayStation Four. Mm-hmm. Um, but. It, I, I don't know. It's just like that. That's crazy that the Switch is able to to beat them out, even though like you're like I said, they're basically giving these things away. Yep. They're like, here's our they're like you can get Red Dead Redemption, which is the biggest game in the world right now, and this console for two hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Like that's crazy, man. No, it's insane. Um, but yeah, so that's there's a bunch more, and like people can go look up the other stats and stuff. There's a bunch more stats, but it's. It's just doing a great job, and uh, next week we'll have even more details on specifically how the Switch has been doing so far and how all the games are doing, um, just some figures around that. Um, and something else that might be happening within the next week or somewhere around there is that Smash Bros. Update 2.0.0 is apparently coming within seven days or so, which, I don't know, do you think probably February 1st, next Friday? Seems reasonable? Yeah, that, yeah. That sounds right. Yep. Um, I want if it, see. This is the thing. This is tinfoil hat time. <laughs> um, if they do that, say the Nintendo Direct <laughs> is around that update, right? Like not for the update, obviously. Yep. But that update does theoretically have what people are saying it might, which is uh, the Piranha Plant. Yep. Uh, and then they talk about Piranha Plant and like a reminder like hey uh, Piranha Plant is going to be in Smash Bros so register your copy you're not going to get them for free idiot <laughs> um, <laughs> it's coming out on this day uh, so I, I don't know Yep. I don't know what day is that what day is February 1st February 1st is Friday which is the yeah I mean yep. that's 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 uh that's a Nintendo Direct uh, that's a good window <laughs> you know you can have it anywhere between Monday and Thursday yep yeah exactly no and I'm <sighs> I mean, again, there's a question about this later, too. And again, like yes, I always say, I know nothing official or anything. But next week just, again, makes sense. And Nintendo never does stuff that makes sense, it seems like. But just considering the Metro Prime 4 stuff. They and randomly do stuff that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> just randomly. So it's like, it seems like nothing ever makes sense because they, they just pick and choose when they want to make sense. Yeah. They don't want us to feel like we know things. Yeah. So they're like, you know what? We're just going to throw them <laughs> off the trail. Like, we have a whole direct edited and everything. Mm-hmm. And just because that dude on Twitter said that we're having it tomorrow, we're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, again, I, I'd i be so curious to find out. And I wish I could at some point know if, it's, if all this stuff that I was saying before, we were saying before and speculation and all that is true and that they were... You know that maybe they were originally planning on having it in earlier January, like January 10th or whatever, when everybody was originally thinking. And because the difference between if if that were the case, the difference between that one and the September 6th one in 2018, where like a bunch of stuff leaked out anyway and all that, is if they knew about the Metro Prime 4 pushback thing for a while, then they would have had ample time to let people know ahead of time so nothing got like actually leaked out they actually like you know moved stuff around on purpose um yeah so yeah also i mean maybe that that could potentially mean that uh either they have a stricter embargo Mm -hmm. around the third party stuff or there's just less third party stuff which i doubt yeah right yeah but even though we haven't gotten a uh, Nintendo Direct, we did this past week get an Indies highlight um, out of Nintendo UK. This is true. And uh, I don't know. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. <laughs> I mean, I, I enjoy most Direct type stuff, but I think I had low expectations going in just because it's easier that way. And yeah. I, I had a good time. There, One, just like, not... 
one thing that made it seem less exciting than sometimes some of the other ones were, I think the presentation of it was a little bit odd where like the, I feel like they would talk about it a little bit ahead of time. And then the trailer itself was just music and kind of some sound effects from the game itself. Yeah. But it didn't have any of the like, it, talking about it as it's yes, happening exactly like, that, yeah. like and something about that just i feel like helps hype up the game a little bit like seeing gameplay is awesome and seeing a trailer is awesome but something about like you know bah, da, 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 three heroes blah, da, 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 <laughs> going on an adventure you know that kind of a thing is right. is just fun um and feels a little bit more energized but yeah i don't know what did you think about the about this we can talk about some of the games real quick uh, just there was really, I mean, obviously, a lot of them like I didn't even know exist. Yeah. Like, it's hard to have <laughs> expectations with an indie direct, you yep. know, because it's like we don't have the same, uh, like we don't follow them as closely mm-hmm. to be like, what are they working on, you know? What is uh, uh Chucklefish working on next? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Apparently, a lot. <laughs> um, so it's like a lot of that is just zero expectations, whatever looks cool, I'm down, yep. you know. Um, and that's, that's what happened. Only th- I did want to know when Wargroove was going to come out. Yeah. Is that a um, kind of game that you're interested in? Um, more so because I like there's a lot of hype around like Advance Wars and it's like, what's going on with Advance Wars? You know, it's uh-huh. like, so I wouldn't like kind of use that. As a, as a way to talk about hmm. Advance Wars in the same way that like I would use like a fast Neo racing to talk about F-Zero. Totally. Yeah. To, to be like, hey, Nintendo, they're doing it. Why can't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I was also pretty excited about that one. And, I mean, it. you know, we kind of heard some rumors or whatever that we... Or not even rumors, but, like, kind of teased that we'd be hearing about that pretty soon. So then it seemed like it would make sense. Yeah, that like, it- I saw... Um, uh, I'm on, like, this press list for... Uh, codes and stuff mm-hmm. and they had like they emailed out about um, requesting keys for it oh like, nice a week ago um, so it was like we're gonna hear something about this game <laughs> at some point <laughs> yep. um, but they didn't send me one because I didn't request it soon enough oh, and they, they had limited supply so uh-huh. I hit up Nintendo Nintendo yeah. help me out here help me out I believe in you Nintendo but yeah that <laughs> game comes out actually also uh, that comes out February 1st so that's the same day as the Smash update and uh, which is next Friday if you're listening to Advanced this. Advanced War Smash Bros. DLC confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a shadow release just going to come out the day of. It's going to be great. Um, but yeah that comes you out. You thought that you were getting piranha <laughs> But really, it's nope, just you're random. Getting, you're getting the wrench. That's what you're getting. Not even the the. the I don't even remember his name. But you're just getting this wrench. Yep. That's all the character. Um, yeah. Now some somebody's gonna come. This name is. Yeah, I don't even know. I honestly didn't know about those games at all until a friend of mine told me about them. Uh, a couple a couple of years ago he was like hey i've got this ds game that you should really play now that you got one i was like all right cool um but then i never also, got around to play what it made them say all right we're calling it advanced wars now yeah because it started out as a famicom game i think interesting oh yeah because it then, was uh, yeah i remember hearing something about that and then eventually it came the game boy advance and they're like you know what it's just advanced wars now we're not calling this ds wars we refuse <laughs> Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, because it was the Game Boy Advance. Okay. Uh, wait, did it first come out on the Game Boy Advance, and so that's why it's called Advance Wars? No, oh. it first came confused. out. I just said Parker. You said Game these. Boy, and I got confused. The first one, yep. the first game in the Wars yep. series, I'm going to call it, came out on the Famicom. And it was just called Famicom Wars? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm learning something Famicom new, AJ. Famicom Wars. Famicom Wars came out in 1988. Look at that. Yeah, I'm stupid, so. <laughs> we established this. Um, Indeed. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're Producer Wargroove. was Gunpei Yokoi. Doesn't sound like Famicom Wars to me. It is Famicom Wars because it was worked on by Intelligent Systems and Nintendo R&D 1. Nice. They merged with R&D 2 and became EA, EPD, mm-hmm. EAD, and then they became EPD. Pretending like you know stuff about Nintendo Studios. Come on, what is this? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, I'm excited for that game too. And one of my coworkers is excited about it as well. And so that's always fun to just have somebody else to play those games with and multiplayer stuff. Yeah, this is nonsense. So the first game, I'm sorry to cut you off, but the first game in this series, Famicom Wars, Game Boy Wars. (laughs) And then... (laughs) After that, it was a long stint. A whole bunch of Paper Mario mm-hmm. and Fire Emblem nonsense. Oh, wait, Super Famicom Wars, and then Advance Wars, and then Advance Wars 2, mm-hmm. which was also on the Game Boy Advance. It's the first time that they double dipped. Yep. So maybe this is where they found their wings. They're mm-hmm. like, you know what? Yep. We made a sequel. Uh, we're going to make another one. We're going to put it on the DS, and we're calling it Advance Wars Dual Strike. That's how you don't commit. That's what you call not committing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're still going to call this Advance Wars, but we're going to put the DS in there somehow. I'd be curious to find out what the sales for all those were too. Where like if they, yeah, if they really hit their stride sales wise, where like Famicom Wars, Game Boy Wars, Super Famicom Wars, like sold decently well, but then the ones on Advance just like took off, and so at that point they're like, well, brand recognition at this point, and they can't yeah. like you know back down from that. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I'm curious. Um, yeah, man. Give us yeah. just you know commit. Give us switch wars. All right. Yeah, that's. I mean, at this point, I mean, I figure it would come back as advanced. Wars. I wonder with those kinds of it's things. It's going to be advanced. Yeah. Wars. they did it too much. They already did it. They made three of these things at the, at this point. It's the advanced war series yeah. now, and the, it's nobody know. Just like how I just said mm-hmm. <laughs> that it, it, it was the war series. Yep. It started out as Famicom, then it went to Super uh, Game Boy, then Super Famicom. You didn't even know. <laughs> No, so, I really didn't. You're like, right. Yeah. So it's like, that's why they're just never going to do it. Yep. It's always going to, either they're never making another game again, mm-hmm. and maybe that's why, <laughs> where it's like, you know what? Yep. Forget it. We're done with the Game Boy Advance. We're not talking about it anymore. Mm-hmm. So we're never making another one of these games again. Or they're just going to call it Advance War, switching it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Got to throw it in there. Yeah. No, I mean, okay, now continue with your point about your coworker or whatever. <laughs> um, my coworker is better at Smash than you. Was that what I was saying? How dare you? <laughs> uh, no, yeah, so we're going to play it. It's going to be great. Um, so, yeah, that's Wargroove. It's, it's going to be cool. Uh, the next one that they announced, and then it's $20. So, if anybody's curious, I got prices on here for the ones that we know um, what the prices are going to be. Double Kick Heroes. Uh, which I think it looks like is already out on Steam and stuff, which I'm curious in what way, because it's using the Joy-Cons in this, so I guess it's just not motion, it's just playing it regular, but it's like a rhythm game with metal, which I like metal. Um, Not necessarily this... Actually, I like Gojira, so yeah. But it's like a rhythm game slash shoot 'em up kind of thing, and it's coming out summer 2019 for a question mark amount of dollars. Do you have any interest in this, AJ? Uh, Very little. Cool. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I probably don't really either. I again, I like metal, but I don't really play just rhythm games very much, so it's probably just, just not going to happen. Give me a rhythm heavy game. I'll play that. Yeah. I'll play that instead. Um, or just give me go wrong like a full was announced. Game Sorry, what? Of or just give me a full game mm-hmm. of the Super Mario Party uh, mini games, which is basically rhythm. Heavy. Yeah, <laughs> that's another one. When's that going to come back? Uh, I mean, they made one on 3DS not that long ago. Hmm. Interesting. Do I have to Google this? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm curious. I actually, I have a segment at some point, not today, but at a different point that we'll talk. Eh, oh, well, it'll happen. Here's a, here's a tease about that. Um, yeah. Moving along. Uh, when ski lifts go wrong. It's kind of like a polybridge kind of game, and it's out now, and it was $12.75 because um, it's on sale for 15% off. And oh, snaps. it looks pretty much like a polybridge kind of game, more or less, which seems fun, like a physics puzzly kind of thing. But yeah, not something that I, I, after you got a certain number of time sync games, like you just don't really need that many more. <laughs> and that's kind yeah, of what that I can't, is. Like I was talking about this uh, with Bob about Stardew Valley because mm-hmm. somebody mentioned something about Stardew Valley co-op and like, why don't you guys stream that? And then Bob was like, uh, we almost did because I was like, hey, we should stream that because uh, they had the co-op thing. And that would be something that people like. Mm-hmm. They like hearing us yell at each other about things. <laughs> um, about turnips. He was like, yeah, he's, he's, like, he's like, nah, we got other stuff. But let's play something else. Um, and he was like, you like that game, though. Why don't you stream? And I was like, I, I mean, I, I kind of 
kind of i do but i don't Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know where it's like that game's kind of like just something that i bought like waiting for something maybe it was like i think it was like mario odyssey i was like waiting for a game and i was like i'm gonna buy something else to like play in between because i don't want to play other stuff that i got you know i don't want to play youtube right now i want to play something new Mm -hmm. Uh, i'm just in that mood so i got stardew valley and dumped like 40 hours into it (laughs) and then didn't touch it again for like eight months Yep, and then again, a bunch of stuff was coming out, and I was waiting for that. And I didn't want to go backwards; I wanted to play something new. So I was like, "Well, I haven't played Stardew Valley in a little bit." Um, so I was playing that, and I dumped like another twenty hours into it, and then haven't touched it since. That's literally exactly <laughs> the scenario for me, where I put. I mean, I've got like eighty-five hours into it now, and I'm still only. I honestly kind of stress myself out the way that I play it, just trying to like be super efficient and also do everything. And then was hanging out with a friend and he was playing his, his Stardew Valley and had like, I've got like a lot of crops and also, you know, lots of animals and all that kind of stuff. And like trying to do everything on one farm, which really is not the best idea, I think. Cause then I just end up burning myself out trying to stress about efficiency but it's yeah it's just a fun game to play as long as you're not playing it the way that i was playing it um yeah i don't do that the the first binge session that i had i literally just fished because it was like i i started doing it it was like because everybody's like fishing so hard i'm like no it's not not hard you you guys are stupid and you suck um how many times have i called somebody stupid today enough Um, but maybe not we'll find out was it enough i don't know if it was enough i don't think people understand um but yeah no so I like got real addicted to that but then in the second binge session I just started doing everything else yep. where it was like I hear that star fruit wine or whatever is like really uh, lucrative mm-hmm. or whatever so I'm gonna do that yep. you know I'm gonna get me some of them uh, so I made my farm more things yep and then I didn't touch it after yeah. that. No, and that's like, I know it's still there. And so it's it's one of those where if I have a lull at some point, I'll probably go back to it and play it some more because I, I really do enjoy it. Um, but it's honestly... It's probably dead for me. Yeah. Because <laughs> Smash Brothers is now that game where it's like, I got nothing else to do. Yeah. You know? I'll play some Smash that's Brothers. That's a very good point. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know about Stardew Valley. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Stardew. You were fun uh, while Smash Brothers didn't exist. Chucklefish will life. forgive you. <laughs> Perhaps. Hey, uh, I'll play their other game. Yeah. Uh, what is it? <laughs> um, dude, dude, well, Wargroove and also um, Inmost, which is yeah, another one. one. Um, but another reason, I, well, a reason that I'm not going to play this next game is Stardew Valley. Uh, Forager it was another one announced, and it's pretty much like a Stardew Valley, but like with more actiony kinds of things and less like home building. And it seems like just uh, less so character. Like, I don't know. So the only part that I avoid, <laughs> <laughs> I like do not go into the mines like at all, really. Yeah. In Stardew Valley, yeah, it's. I mean, it seems like it could be cool, especially for somebody that really likes those kinds of things. It seems like it would be neat, but all things considered, it's just. I don't know. It doesn't have the kind of charm and like sort of world building that Stardew Valley has, even though I don't really care about making too many relationships with a ton of people. It's just nice that that's something that's there. It's like, oh, there's people that are out there that have, you know, made up lives, but lives nonetheless. Oh, that's what they wanted us to do. They wanted us to get married. Yeah, that's what they wanted me and Bob to do. (laughs) Nice. Oh, shoot. I was trying to figure that out in the background. Yep. (laughs) What was it? Why did they want us to play that game? I mean, I guess I'd pay to see that. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Forager. Uh, coming soon, it says, and we don't know how much money. And next, Goat Simulator. Everybody knows everything they need to know about Goat Simulator. It's out now for $30. <laughs> um, Inmost. Honestly, I was really kind of interested in Inmost. I- you were Inmost. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> they got Stupid. me. Stupid. <laughs> uh- <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It just looks cool. I think I like the kind like vaguely creepy. I don't care about horror games really, um, mm-hmm. but like the vaguely creepy kind of thing and that kind of aesthetic. Like, I, I think I'm into that. Just finding out what's going on, and especially there's the three different stories going on. I don't know. Was that something that uh, interested you at all? Uh, sure. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Uh, and there are three more Unruly Heroes, which is out now I for twenty dollars. I have that one. Nice. What do you think so far? I didn't play it yet. And what do you not think so far? Sh- <laughs> I was going to stream it, um, so I didn't play it yet. Cool. I was going to stream uh, Thursday. Mm. 
Oh right, when all the streaming stuff happened. Yeah, it didn't happen. Yep. I wanted to stream it on the day that it came out, but they they literally got back to me like the minute I stopped checking my email, <laughs> <laughs> so it just didn't happen that nice. day. It looks good. I mean, it's like graphics are great. I don't know how much I like the gameplay doesn't look particularly enticing any more than another kind of platformer type action ish game is. But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, graphics look or just like the art style rather looks really good. Right. So that's fun. Um, yeah. So uh, let us know when you stream that and what your thoughts are on it. Cause I'm curious if it's great, then I'll pick it up too. And then two more were announced cross code coming 2019 for a question mark amount of dollars. Uh, that game's already been I out. Feel like, I feel like that's what I've heard the most people say that they're interested in. Yep. Uh, so I'll check it out. Mm-hmm. And SteamWorld Quest, also same thing, coming out this year at some point for a question mark amount of dollars. Um, and I really liked SteamWorld Dig 2 pretty well. Uh, I don't know for sure how much I care about this or not. I like RPGs, but the like card mechanic thing, I don't know how I feel about that in video games. Like I like tabletop games as well, but for some reason the two just don't feel like they overlap for me personally super well. But So image and form... Mm-hmm. Is like one of the first like devs that just like full board was like, yeah, just like play all of my game, play all of our games, you know, like just play every game that we make. So they just like sent us a lot of different their games, like Steam World Ding and all that stuff. Um, I liked, I played the first one on Wii U, and I like that a lot. Uh-huh. Uh, and I also had the first one on Switch. I don't know if I like it any more or less because I already played it on Wii U, so I didn't have to play it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, the second one's great. I like it better. Uh, Steam World Heist. It's weird. I like it, but at the same time, it's like it doesn't like grab me because I don't really care about the type of game that it is. Yeah. Like I care in the sense that I like the world and all that stuff, but I don't really care about the gameplay. Right. Which is pretty important when playing games, you know. (laughs) Yes. And that's the problem with this one, potentially, where it's like, I don't know about this one. Um, And they, they like, described it as, I don't even remember. It was like, they said something about, like... uh, the type of game it is i mean it's but my, I mean, oh they, they say bait and katos that was what they oh, like in the oh two. interesting um and i'm not a huge fan of that game i mean i don't dislike it yeah but it's just a thing that exists you know i didn't i didn't see that i was like oh bait and katos i'm in <laughs> uh-huh yeah no so it's I, I honestly i don't know i'd be curious to try it out for sure um just to find out what it's like because i like turn-based rpgs and but depending on how the card thing is done i could just see that going a couple different ways and i have never played a bait and kato's game or actually even heard of it so uh (laughs) that's my own fault i guess that's um it's a monolith game before they uh interesting before they were partnered with nintendo gotcha it's another one of those games that's like is this one of the things they're working on Mm -hmm. but like who knows because bandai presumably owns the ip i'm pretty sure they said like blatantly i think Monolith said, hey, we would like to make this game, yep. but Bandai on the IP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another uh, card game thing, switching uh, switching sides of uh, the podcast a little bit. Uh, <laughs> did you see the announcement for Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission, whatever? Is that what it was called? Yeah, I saw When that, I first I saw that, care. I was like, wait, was this... Like, as I was first watching it, I was like, is this the RPG that like, no. and then I realized pretty shortly into it, I was like, no, it's not. This is a card game kind of thing. Like, this is not it. But for a second, I was yeah, like, and that was, a, that was announced before. Right. That was like, that was like a game. Like the, the announcement is that it's coming West, but they oh, um, gotcha. basically were saying with the action RPG, they're like, Hey, we're making an action RPG. Yep. <laughs> and a lot of people were like, um, Somebody said in the comments, I don't, I didn't pull that one, uh, but somebody said in the comments of, of the video where it was like, uh, Xenoverse is their action RPG. They're probably going to make another one. And I was like, no, Xenoverse isn't really an action RPG. And they mm. even, even themselves classify Xenoverse as a fighting game. Yeah. Cause it's okay. So, and so this is obviously, this is going it's into your not, topic. It's not a fighting game. I just want to clarify <laughs> on that. It's more like a, like they call it a fighting game, but it's not a good one. Is it? Um, so the, I guess the thing that I don't know with Xenoverse 
is the world like I, I guess my impression of it is that you like choose a world area to go into or something and then it's it's more like a giant arena with different atmospheres or is it actually like one cohesive big world kind of thing i don't know how does that work it's there's like the i guess what you might be thinking of is the fact that there's like a hub world to like go to like all the different like missions and stuff like that gotcha. but it's kind of like a like a almost like a loot shooter sort of situation where it's like kind of mmo uh, kind of like that's what xeno okay is. so it, um, is it kind of like a like monster hunter world or mo- i mean just a monster hunter type situation where you like pick so like a mission and then you just go to that world area from there it doesn't Not matter. Really. Cool. It's, it's like a thing of like, <laughs> it's like, uh, I want to make this fighter look like this or have these right. skills or have this outfit or unlock this thing. So I'm going to do these like uh, missions for these drops. Gotcha. And it's like a fighting game, kind of, mm-hmm. but not really. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whereas hopefully the assumption for the this action RPG is that it actually has like more of a story and is a regular like rpg i guess in that sense um and like like a game that if you look up the game yep the first thing that it says is action rpg yeah. and not <laughs> fighting game you right. know because like that's what xenoverse is it's like xenoverse says fighting game and then below that it says role-playing game mm, yeah which what does that even mean right. you know yeah. um all games where you're a character can be called a role-playing <laughs> game you know uh-huh. um but yeah I, I think that them specifically calling this project dragon ball rpg z or whatever mm-hmm. uh so yeah hopefully like, puts I, that I, first and foremost <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty sure that this is like them saying, hey, we're breaking ground here. We're doing something different yeah. that we haven't done before. Mm-hmm. But yeah, on that note, you made a video all about that game. And I thought it was really interesting. Um, I'll I'll go straight into saying I know very little about Dragon Ball. And that, so there, there's that. <laughs> so yeah. I won't have barely anything to say on like you know story aspects or anything like that. You don't got nothing to say about Corrin and his sensu beans. Uh, I've got everything to what say about Corrin and his sensu beans. What are your thoughts about how beans? they're going to handle Key and 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 health? Let me tell you um, this: they're going mm-hmm. to handle Key and health by using life force because of the sensu beans from Corrin <laughs> that are grown at some place that you mentioned in your video. But what do you think about how they're going to do Snake Road though? Oh, like how are they going to do that? Twelve. That's definitely how they're going to do it. Maybe <laughs> maybe 112. <laughs> and what about gravity? What are they going to do with gravity mm-hmm. inside of the pods, training in Bulma's spaceship, you know? Let me, let me tell you, you this. That one? What aren't they going to do one? with gravity? <laughs> <laughs> Have I answered your question sufficiently? All right, that's it. Thank you. No, just kidding. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I thought your video was real good and had some uh, neat things. You mentioned the art style, and the art style, I think, at, I mean, you said pretty much it's going to look like what in your thumbnail, so I assume that means just like standard anime cell shading kind yeah, of thing. just like what Goku yep. and Gohan look like in that. Like that, presumably, because they have, like, that's what their promotional thing of like, this is our project, this is what this is. Yep. It's a 3D model, you know. <laughs> like uh, somebody commented, thinking that that was just like a like a uh, like I cut that out of like a like a um, part of the anime, like an episode. Gosh, gotcha. yeah. And like, no, 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 that's a 3D model. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like that's most likely what this game Psych looks like. Looks like Jump Force. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looks like plastic Dragon Ball. <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. But yeah, that would be. I mean. I'm down with that. Cell shaded stuff always looks good and or, you know, that kind of style. It looks good and for a long time too, which is also nice. Yeah, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm just like solidified, hey, anime games, you can't go back from here. Yep. <laughs> you gotta be this forever. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, the things. Um, yeah, other things you're talking about. I'm, I'm just going to kind of skip around a little bit, but the thing that I thought was the coolest was you talking about the time mechanics. And I think that, I don't know, I just thought that was really neat. And because that's something I, I remember before I was on the show when I commented on, I, I don't remember what game it was that we were talking about, but something where uh, talking about games having time aspects and feeling like you're in a rush or not in a rush or those kinds of things like Bajora's Mask, blah, 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 blah. Um, mm-hmm. This is a different way of doing that 
than that from my understanding of what you were talking about. But I think the thing that most intrigued me was the like risk or reward aspect of like training, like pretty much the more that you, the more time you spend training, the more the enemy has, I guess, kind of scaled or whatever to where they've either yeah, done cause, more. Cause certain enemies like, like a Frieza, you know, Frieza is right. I do. Okay. So Frieza, before the stupid Dragon Ball Super movie where all of a sudden they're like, you know what, here's here's the thing. Here's how we can make him relevant again. He learned what training is. Yeah. He figured out that if he trains, he can get significantly stronger mm -hmm. somehow. Like, he, he trains for six months and becomes, like, 20 times stronger. Um, so, like, and, and somebody like him traditionally wouldn't do that, you know? Like, but with time passing, that will give him more time to achieve, like, a certain goal. Like, he'll get more time to find the Dragon Balls or he'll kill more people or whatever the case may be. Yep. Somebody like Vegeta would train. Mm -hmm. He would get stronger. Um so, like, I, I think that, and like I said about, like, the Dragon Balls and stuff, like, like, so many things circle back to we have this much time to do this, and if we don't do it within this time, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, or we did this, this happened, we need the Dragon Balls, but we already used those six months ago, they're still stones, we can't use them, we gotta wait six months. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, a, that, that happens so much. In it's kind of like the, I mean, on a much macroer version of like Prince of Persia, Sands of Time kind of thing, where like that's just a mechanic and it doesn't, yeah. you know, it's just like it adds something really special to that game. Um, so similarly, it would be cool on just a much bigger level of, you know, there's time. I think the tricky part would be balancing the time aspect. Like how much actual time is time in the game. Yeah, exactly. And also making it not feel like rushed or like that you don't, you don't have to actually like, if you don't get this game, I mean, honestly, like Pikmin, I, I enjoyed Pikmin one and it was also stressful. So like, yeah. I didn't really enjoy the stressful aspect of the time. Like I'd prefer to be able to do it. But I feel at like a lot pace. of people like that. Like, I feel like mm, if yeah. they made it stressful, it would be more accurate. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know? Cause like, all right, man, you got a month to train before this thing kills you and everything you mm -hmm. love. <laughs> like a lot of people like that pressure where they're like, all right, well, this is, that gives me a reason to care about this. Yeah. Game. I feel like it's gotta be something or it doesn't have to be, but like, a good way to do it would be where there's there's like extra reward or whatever for like you can do it whichever way you want you know it's kind of like playing an rpg you can grind yeah, and like, level up a, a ton and then just blow right. through everybody but yeah. it's different you know for me the way i was thinking about it and i'm i, I guess i didn't make this clear enough where it would be the time is more so for you to use on characters that are less conventional. Right. So like if you if you don't spend a lot of time grinding, then the events that happen in the show would be the easiest way to go about playing through the game. Right. So like Goku would just be your de facto choice yep. in most scenarios. But if at a certain point, like instead of Gohan beating Cell, you want Goku to beat Cell, then train Goku more than you train Gohan. Mm -hmm. You know, like that sort of situation rather than them forcing you to like grind like pokemon kind of yeah. where it's like you don't have to grind in pokemon mm -hmm. you can just do business as usual and your pokemon will be completely competent mm -hmm. um kind of like that yeah where you can do business as usual and have the same uh like story that we've been told for years or you can uh want to solo run with krillin yep. <laughs> and train him super hard within whatever time they allot for you to do that yep yeah i man i think it'd be Super cool. And I, the other part that I thought was interesting was just figuring out flight in a, you know, open world or that kind of a style of game. Um, so I thought your thoughts on, on that were interesting. It's, I mean, the, I actually didn't get to take notes on this part, but something, it was something along the lines of like that you just have a limited amount of flight. You can't just like fly around everywhere, but you use it as yeah. kind of some of your key or life force in the same way that you do other things. Right, because mm -hmm. in the show, like things like, and it's like, uh, it's not really a huge impact on them, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not, it's not like they're not like, man, I can't fly here because if I do that, then I'm going to die, <laughs> you know? But like, they get tired, and it's like, well, I'm not going to fly because it has these effects because of how it works, yeah. like because of key. I can't fly super fast because that'll make my key go up, and then they're going to be able to find me. It's hard to suppress if I'm flying fast, yep. you know. 
it's just stuff like that like have it more intertwined with that so it's like a reason beyond just uh this breaks the game if you fly beyond this certain point <laughs> uh, higher than this you know like they uh-huh. got to give you a reason to not do it yep um and i think a lot of people don't like the idea of that because they don't like that kind of design mm-hmm. or at least for that design to be uh noticeable yeah because every game does that every game limits what you're able to do otherwise right. you wouldn't have any challenge mm-hmm. like if you ha- if you're lim- if there's no limits there's no game right yeah exactly yeah so those i those are most of my thoughts i had some other little ones but that's uh kind of the main bigger things that I had anything to say about because I, I don't know about the story and all that stuff anymore but How dare you. we've got How a dare lot you. of thoughts from you guys um, so yeah here's some here's some of those the first one this is the longest one by far so here it goes <laughs> this is from uh, Nahum Dyer uh, I apologize if I said that wrong but something along those lines Nahum says I would like to see a feature that allows players to sense a high level character powering up from afar for example if characters like Vegeta is powering up I would be able to sense his power either by seeing his powerful aura from afar or feel the ground rumble which would make the character feel more intimidating I'm not a fan of time in video games but the time thing would be better implemented on multiplayer if they include multiplayer also, I think they should have different levels of scouters, for example. If I try to scan a high-level character's power level slash battle power with a low-level scouter, the scouter would break and would need the right scouter that could scan high-level character's power level or battle power or gain the ability to sense Kai without a scouter. I don't want there to be a limit for how long I can stay in the air while flying, especially because I hate that in Dragon Ball Online when I first unlocked the ability to fly. End comment. Uh, sounds like you don't like limits, <laughs> <laughs> which makes sense, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, that's natural. But again, I mean, that's game design. I mean, obviously, they wouldn't present it that way. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't say, like, hey, you're limited. You can't fly for long. Yep. <laughs> like, it would just be a thing that's in the game, and that's just how it is. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of like climbing in Breath of the Wild, where, like, yeah. ev- I think everybody... Besides, the, take rain out of it completely. Just ignore the fact yeah. that a lot of people hate the rain thing. <laughs> Besides that, everybody seems to like the fact that you have to like strategize how to use your climbing. And like, there's some places you just can't climb at the beginning, and you have to wait until later to be able to climb them, just because you physically know like it makes sense. There's a reason you wouldn't be able to. Similarly, but like the thing is, like with climbing in Breath of the Wild, the reason why like a lot because there really is nowhere where you can't climb right like if you budget how you climb right you can cheese it yeah (laughs) because there's like flat parts in the uh, like on most surfaces Mm -hmm. except for the ones that you physically cannot climb on like in the uh shrines and stuff like that that you could stand on regain your stamina and keep climbing into the next thing Mm -hmm. um not to say that flying would be able to like somehow do that for you right um, but I think that that is a way where, uh, for sure, like limits are a game mechanic. Mm-hmm. Like that makes the game more fun. Yeah. is the fact that they limit it like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What about um, he mentioned the scouters and stuff like that? Any thoughts on that? I think that's a really cool idea. Yeah. Um, I think that again, that that's another thing that makes the game more like how Dragon Ball works because it is a thing of like, oh my god, this guy he's over nine thousand. My scouter is broken. <laughs> It, it had <laughs> you know? to come up at some point. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, th- that's not even the Wii version. The Wii version is, um, the transition is actually 8,000. That's the Wii version. Um, but we don't we don't talk to those. You know, the Super Mario Bros. <laughs> 2 is actually... I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah. Um, that would be cool. Yeah. I'd be down for that. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like the time... Like, like he said with time, I feel like that's another thing of him not wanting to be limited in any way. Mm-hmm. Um, which is fine. It's natural. But I, I, I just think that, uh, not to say with this specific thing is unreasonable, but I think it's unreasonable to expect a game to not limit you. Right. Honestly, I mean, that's kind of the thing from the the little bits of, I don't know, Xenoverse footage that I've seen. It feels kind of like you can sort of do whatever you want, um, which again is yeah. like really cool because then you feel like the most powered up version of that character. But I feel like if... 
again, not knowing Dragon Ball super well, but, or, I mean, taking My Hero Academia maybe as a better example. Sure, like now, if I look at All Might now, he could do pretty much whatever he wants, you know, well, not now. Um, <laughs> but as is, <laughs> you know, as his most <laughs> trained version, um, you know, he can do pretty much whatever he wants. But then if you look at him before he trained and when he was still kind of getting up and started, that's not the case. So like, I think you have to assume that, especially with an RPG, you're not coming into it as, you know, the same way you would in Dragon Ball Fighters, where it's the characters at their like final forms of whatever form they're going to be in that case. But right. instead you're going and I, and in. I feel like, I yeah. feel like those characters, like the All Mights and the Gokus and the, you know, mm-hmm. like the Naruto's even, they're less interesting to use. Yeah. Cause it's like, I don't want a win button. That's I'm not playing this game to automatically win. Yeah, exactly. I want pushback. <laughs> yeah, and it just feels rewarding to get better and stuff. Um, and also, I, I forgot to mention, too, your comment about being able to choose just in general different characters and stuff like that. That's something I, I really appreciate that because, um, I don't know, like Octopath, for example. I really enjoyed having different character selection and you know having characters that I feel like I resonate with this one more than this other one and that kind of thing where I can and same for Pokemon where you can you know choose the ones that you want to level up and work with because right. if you I don't know if you play a game and the the main character just isn't your kind of vibe or whatever and you love the the gameplay itself but you just don't care about that character then it takes something away but if you get to instead choose a character that you really like that's awesome yeah the, I mean, the biggest inspiration for me on that end was like the water cooler moments mm-hmm. of like, man, I, I got to this part and uh, this happened, and it's like, oh, but how did Goku react? Mm-hmm. And you're like, no, Goku's dead in my game, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that, yeah. that sort of thing. Like that, those are really cool uh, moments yep. that don't happen very often because they don't really give you that type of like power of choice. Mm-hmm. And I think it would be cool if they did that in Dragon Ball, especially since we've been told this story over and over again Mm -hmm. for years. I don't understand how you don't know it (laughs) just by osmosis. Like just the fact that they tell this story so many times Mm -hmm. a year. Yep. Mm. Um, Michael Mulligan says directly controlled characters, Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Frieza. Side. How dare you call him Gohan? (laughs) Go on. Sorry. Yeah, oh. you're welcome <laughs> for that. I almost died right here. <laughs> almost died on the spot. Yep. Um, I'm moving along. I can see just, your cursor on the thing. <laughs> <laughs> just ignoring that. Oh, you can. That's funny. Um, yeah. Sidekick or party characters. Krillin, Piccolo, um, Tien. Mm-hmm. Tien. Tien, yeah. cool. Chaozu, Yamcha, Roshi, Android 17 and 18, Majin Buu, Captain... Ginyu, 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 Cell, Future Trunks, Chibi Trunks, Goten, and Zamazu, Zamazu. I've never in my life heard somebody refer to Kid Trunks as Chibi Trunks. (laughs) I've never heard that in my life. Um, But no, I'm not down with this. Yeah. (laughs) I don't don't want to limit it like that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, like, these are the characters that matter, and these are the ones that don't. That's the whole reason why I I wanted to be able to expand Mm -hmm. who you use. I mean, um, if that's a prediction list, probably fairly accurate. But if it's like yeah, a hopes yeah, and yeah. dreams and like, you know, what action points are is trying to, you know, have cool ideas that. Yeah, like aim higher than what you're with the status quo. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. But Michael Morgan, uh, if that's likely to be what happens. <laughs> yes. I would imagine. I hope you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, man. Um, yeah. M- let's see. Mamo Doko. The, the, well, one more thing. Yep. The fact that he said directly controllable Frieza, like if you could control Frieza throughout the whole game, that would be cool. Yeah. That would be interesting to see like his perspective throughout the whole entire game. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not sure if that's what he means. Yep. Mm. But yeah, we can continue. <laughs> Um, Mamo Daco or something. Mamo Mamo Uh, the combining health and key thing sounds like or sounds stupid. You use uh, Kamehameha, it misses, and then the opponent lands a hit on you, and you're dead. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> that is literally the point because otherwise, all you got to do is Kamehameha, 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 and then hope you hit one, and then you win. Yep. But 
this way you can't be reckless yep. and you got to plan out because just like in the show like you don't see goku just freaking throwing out kame kame waves mm -hmm. you know like it's man it's like all right i got him in the position somebody's holding him or i can warp towards him or whatever he has some type of plan that this is definitely going to hit they're not just throwing him out willy-nilly yeah and it, like if you uh naruto is a good example of like they literally say i have th i can literally do these many of this attack in this day mm -hmm. <laughs> like uh kakashi said something about sasuke being able to do like four chidoris or something like that in a day like that does not like that doesn't translate in these games because you're just able to power back up again yeah no exactly yeah and i think it's one of those where it's kind of you know back to the risk reward thing where if i'm i don't know say i'm strong enough to do the following thing if i can pick up a car and throw it onto somebody or whatever i'm also really vulnerable at that point when i'm picking up the car and they could like just stab me and then you know that would be the end of it or whatever so right. like similarly i feel like in this situation when you're charging something or it's like even in smash where like unless you're uh stupid ganondorf charging up his ganon punch thing and he just is unflinching in that has all the super power and super armor in the world yeah goodness gracious but you can grab him, besides but yeah that's true that's the besides that though you know if, if i'm charging up just a smash attack then I'm like way more vulnerable in that moment than any other moment. So similarly, I yeah. feel like also there's things like end and lag, yeah, and, you know, like stuff like yeah. that. So I think so, being yeah. able to be punished for trying to do something really, I don't know. I mean, or even it's like you know having to cool down after hyper beam. That those kinds of things. Right. All of those are like good game mechanics that like you kind of hate in the moment, but you actually appreciate overall because it's like it balances it. It makes the game more interesting and enticing instead of just making it yeah the win button where you just do one thing and you're like oh that was it I'm done. Yeah, because literally I beat the entire uh, campaign of Xenoverse the first one. I didn't buy the second one because the first one's stupid and I hate it. <laughs> Um, which means that I, I assumed that I was going to hate the, the second one as well. Mm -hmm. um, but literally, I beat that whole campaign just by spamming Kamea waves, mm. essentially. Yeah. Um, so was, that was like a big part of me being like, nah, I, if, I, if I were in charge of a Dragon Ball game, I would nix that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Nate says, dude, time would be a killer mechanic. Time is such a big part of Dragon Ball, but the games haven't properly acknowledged that yet. This is true. This is the truth. It, I mean, Xenoverse kind of did acknowledge time, but like in a dumb kind of like Elseworld sort of situation rather than like using time as a mechanic. It was just using time as a plot device mm. to be like, yeah. uh, we're going to use time to be able to put you in these like what if scenarios rather than we're using time and there's consequences to if you don't manage your time properly. Yep. It's like, I mean, there being like one timeline where like, things change but i don't know yeah i'm with you yeah yeah uh moving on justin our good friend justin says i would rather a dragon ball or naruto or naruto rpg uh dragon ball because it was more a quest based show than the free for all that z slash super turned into naruto because i think chakra blending would be a super cool magic mechanic lol this is true i agree um, I don't always agree with Justin, but this time I do. <laughs> are there no Naruto um, RPGs? Uh, there are, but they suck. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> uh, but like this just translates to really how I feel about Dragon Ball and like anime as a whole. I'm, I mean, I like Dragon Ball Z mm -hmm. and like the, the IP of Dragon Ball, but it's like definitely like 90% nostalgia. Right. <laughs> like if I found out about Dragon Ball Z tomorrow, like yesterday or whatever, um, I probably wouldn't like it at all because it's a lot of deus ex machina. It's a lot of like, right. oh, the guy won because he yelled for a long time and found this power deep within himself <laughs> to somehow win, you know? Yeah. Whereas like Naruto is a lot more of like, oh, I beat you because you tripped into here and you walked in this position and that gave me the opportunity to use the thing that I've been planning this whole time. Yep. You know, like Shikamaru sort of situation. Um, do you know about Naruto? <laughs> so, yeah, I started watching it really recently. Um, uh -huh. And I, I think I need to, because it, it definitely falls into some of the early, like, older anime tropes. Do you know tropes. who Shikamaru is? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh -huh. I've only gotten, I think, into 
towards the end of first season, maybe into the second season. Oh. Well, yeah, th- or so maybe not even, even that far. There's stuff like that in the first season. Like, there's stuff like that within the first like five episodes oh, okay. where like Kakashi is like, oh, okay, I got you in my trap. You yeah. are trapped now, Naruto, because you walked into this place and there was a trap there. Yep. And now you're hanging from the ceiling and watching everybody else eat. Yep. You know, there's nothing like that in Dragon Ball Z right. and Super. It's just like Goku yelled for a long time and he got this new hair color. It's great. Everybody buy the action figure. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of the definition of power creep in a lot of senses yeah. where it's just like yeah. that's yeah i mean kind of what digimon is to some degree where it's like uh all right this guy's bigger than the other guy uh now this yeah. one's bigger than the <laughs> other guy <laughs> that's about it you know yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. except with even with digimon there's some kind of accountability for that because it's like once you turn into a really big dude mm-hmm. you gotta spend a while as the real little that's true Lava. yeah <laughs> Uh, Dragon Ball, they don't do that. Yeah. Dragon Ball is just like, hey, you're just that the guy. Sometimes Goku's not able to hold on to the big superpower that's just the win button. Mm-hmm. For He can't do it for 12 episodes at a time, but he can do it for three. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you know? or it's like, yeah. I okay. need to find... Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day who you know follows naruto and stuff and i was saying yeah it just it feel it falls into some of the older anime tropes of just taking a really long time to kind of get some story beats going um yes and so i think he was mentioning that there's websites that have charts of like watch this episode and this episode and this episode and this episode where you'll yeah. you'll get all that stuff so i think that's something that i might invest in at some point because i just especially with it being such a it's kind of a show where I need to be watching to understand what's going on. But at the same time, it's the kind that I would also want to be watching in the background sometimes to like be able to catch up. I feel like if, if that's how you want to consume it, I would say when you want to be invested in really paying it, paying attention to Naruto, do like the, like the straight line, like this is the Canon Uh stuff. And then when you want to watch it in the background, I would say that a lot of the Canon stuff, I mean, uh, filler stuff is worth watching because Naruto does a good job Mm. at filling out the world outside of just the core cast of characters. Gotcha. Yeah. Like the Naruto's not like Dragon Ball in the sense that like you hear about Goku and you hear about Vegeta mm-hmm. and you hear about their children and that's it, <laughs> you know. Like it's not like the the Skywalker syndrome, right? Uh, that like Dragon Ball falls into. Mm-hmm. Um, you hear a lot about the world as a whole, yep. and that's one of the things the I really film. enjoy about uh, My Hero Academia as well is just that mm-hmm. it, yeah, it, they're really good at that too. Just there's all these characters that at the beginning I was like, oh, well, I'm never gonna have to care about this person, and then lo and behold, three episodes later is all about that person. Right. I was like, my oh, they're so cool now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, like Todoroki. Todoroki, would be, I mean, I guess he would be like the, the Vegeta, mm-hmm. I yeah, guess. I can see that. Um, But, yeah, there's like Froppy. Froppy wouldn't get no time in Dragon Ball. Mm-hmm. I mean, even like Yagorozu or someone like that, where it's just like, yeah. oh, it's just a character. It's supposed to be there for, I don't know, you know, uh, uh, playing into stereotypes and stuff and then it's like oh no like yeah. there's actually a reason that she has a low cut shirt for whatever um, and all that stuff for creation purposes like and things a, a, like a metal gear type of yeah. reason though <laughs> she has to breathe through her skin you monster <laughs> Yeah, for sure. All right, we've got one last comment on this video, and uh, then we're moving on to Q&A. So Sam Diaz says, how about a card collection game where you're just a normal person, but you find this deck of cards from your favorite manga, Dragon Ball? Some evil dude found a deck of villain cards and plans on doing evil dude stuff with them, so it's up to you to stop him. Battling would be similar to other card video games, and world traversal could be similar to Yokai Watch. Uh, I like how you put the cursor there. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I feel like that would be a licensing nightmare, but I'd be down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that would be cool. I mean, obviously, wait, that's not this game. Speci- that's not the action RPG, but it would be cool, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, also, I feel like that would be the type of game where like if shonen did it and they brand it as like a jump game like mm-hmm. it's jump jump deck or whatever yep <laughs> um <laughs> it would be subtitled and i'm not down for that right i don't want to read my games just let me play them mindlessly and have the characters talk to me and i understand it yep i mean i the other thing with this is it's likely that this is the kind of game that would be kind of an afterthought side series where or it even probably, uh, uh, 
now stick with me yep. a mobile game <laughs> Yo, yeah no exactly where it's like it's kind of shoehorned in as opposed to like yeah. it's a great idea and it would make for a really cool full you know game but it wouldn't get that treatment because there are already like you know full-fledged games that are in these franchises so they you know it would kind of get a mario tennis type treatment or whatever which right you know just di- doesn't get the same kind of love and respect that mario mario Kart m- proper games do yeah yeah so yeah including new super mario bros you deluxe just kidding um, <laughs> provide, provide <laughs> uh so yeah that's all your comments and stuff on aj's video so uh yeah next time he puts up a video on tuesday at four uh, for Eastern time, leave some comments and uh, like he t- tells you to do at the end of the thing. And maybe they'll get featured on here where we'll talk about them and give you our thoughts on your thoughts on AJ's thoughts. Yep. Cause that's well, said, fun. Well, said, you know, <laughs> unless you're Parker, then we don't talk about your thoughts cause your thoughts are half of the show. <laughs> we don't yeah. pull your comments. <laughs> Um, that's why, like, your comments have just like they completely shifted in like what they are. Because uh-huh. before it was like you would be like one of the like more thoughtful, like writing paragraphs and stuff like that. <laughs> now you just like meme. <laughs> it's like all you do in the comments now. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, my, I I still think my favorite. So for anybody, the first comment that you and I ever interacted on was I don't remember what video it was that, but it was something where you asked a question and it was something kind of meta about like, what's the best, you know, or how do you define such and such or whatever? And I wrote like, a yeah, super, I used to super like, long. just ask random questions. Like that kind of like changed it. Like I'm going to ask people stuff about the video, but I used to ask like dumb stuff. Uh-huh. Like what's your favorite color and what's your favorite food? You know? Yep. <laughs> and people would be like, I like purple pizza. <laughs> Uh, it was a good time, but yeah, I want a, a little switch code or a little game code off of that. And that was good times, and that's how this all got started, kind of. That's true. That's true. Indeed. Um, so moving on to some Q and A, I think these ones are all from Discord. So uh, if you want to ask some questions, you can do it in a bunch of different places. You can tweet it, tweet it fanatics four or AJ or whatever. But also, you can join the Discord. Preferably me. Just tweet me. You know. Yeah. You can tweet fanatics four. That's fine. I see those tweets also, mm-hmm. but like I see the tweets more. Uh, soon. <laughs> I see them sooner if you tweet them at yep. me because I'm always logged into my account. Mm-hmm. And that's at AM, AM Cray JR. It's in the description probably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we asked for some questions and you delivered. Uh, specifically, AJ, you asked, uh, you know, obviously we'll be talking about MP4, Metroid Prime 4, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but ask whatever questions you have, MP4 included. So not underscore Macklemore said, obviously you prefer dot MP4s to dot WMVs or dot MOVs. Please explain why. So AJ. Um, I actually export all my videos as MOVs. Uh, um, and fine. most of that is because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Great I, reason. I, mean, I a lot of them like I'll start like I'll I'll start like a sequence or something and I want to save part of it um and use it later mm-hmm. like lower thirds stuff like that. Uh and MP4s and WMVs don't have transparency, guys. Oh. But MOVs do. So the more you know. Good to know. Yeah, I, I didn't. So there's that. About the nitty gritty. You know what I mean? Nitty gritty indeed. Uh, yeah. So good stuff. Um, uh, there you go. There's that. Lizrin 2. What's your predictions for the eventual next direct? Um, and also, think- Iron Thor later asks, when do you think the next direct is? So those are related. Uh, so we can... I think we're going to get the wrench from Vance Wars um, as a Smash Bros. character. I think we're going to get the Grinch Fe- Fe- from Grinch Vance Wars. <laughs> <laughs> on February 1st. <laughs> um, and on, what, Tuesday? On the, that Tuesday, that week, on, what, the 30th or something like that? Uh, 29th. 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 Yep. Uh, the, on that day, we're going to get a direct, and uh, Sakurai is going to, he's going to be the host of the whole direct. <laughs> Um, he's going to say, hey, everybody in Smash Brothers is getting a new game. And it's coming out this year. Except for Metroid, not you. Yep. You've been a bad girl, <laughs> Metroid. Mr. Metroid, the girl character. Yep. Um, so you don't get a game this year. But everybody else, including DDD, DDD gets his own game. 
And it's all a, it's a card characters. game, because why yes, not? All Sakurai's characters, they're going to get two games each. <laughs> Sakurai we just burn things. out the entire all franchises in 2019 and then there's nothing left except for waiting three or four years for metroid prime 4 yeah <laughs> there you go yeah you know i yeah i think i don't know i'm gonna honestly i'm gonna guess that it's this tuesday and if it's not then i'm just not gonna guess for we're a just long never time we're gonna talk about directs ever again yeah. we're changing the name of the podcast <laughs> Yeah, as far as content, honestly, like if if we can, if we know in enough advance, like it would be cool to do uh, just a just you know predictions discussion because that would probably take a little while. But besides that, yeah, um, I don't know. I'll probably I'll just if we don't get a chance to do that, I'll tweet out some of my predictions the just the day before or something like that too. Um, Follow so Parker. We'll is it in your your Twitter at Parker Deal or is it Parker? I think Mark? it's at Parker. Yeah, it's at Parker Deal. Um, Follow Parker at Parker D. Yeah. Spell like it sounds. <laughs> yep. Um, Patar35 asks Do y'all think anything big will happen with the rumor 2.0.0 Smash update? Yes. The wrench from <laughs> Advance Wars. <laughs> He's already told you guys. Come on. Jesus. How many times do I got to say it? Uh, but no, I. I I guess if, if there is a Nintendo Direct, I can see Piranha Plant being a part of the update because they did say that it would come in February. Yep. Um, but it could also just be the groundwork for Piranha Plant mm-hmm. to come later in February because a lot of times when Nintendo says something's coming this month, uh, it's usually the end yeah, of that. No month. kidding. <laughs> With like the Switch being the exception because like everybody was like Switch is coming out or Nintendo NX at this time. Yep. It's coming out like March twenty eighth. You know, like right at the tail end of the year, and it sounds like nah, it's the third. Yep. <laughs> so maybe maybe Piranha Plant is going to be one of those. Honestly, oh, this is a side note, but um, I went back and watched some old video of yours that was like NX predictions. Um, I don't even remember when exactly it was, but it was like in October 2016 before the thing or before the actual presentation or something. But uh, props to you, because at some point you were like, I mean, Pokemon Go, like with all this stuff, maybe even Pokemon Go is going to come on right. Switch. And I was like, I'm always right. Man alive. My, <laughs> Good job, my second video, literally my second video. And it's funny because like the, there was like this article that I don't know, it was like three outlets and they were on like huge outlets or nothing like that. But they covered Bob talking about the Switch before it was the Switch. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's not the only person that was like, I even called what freaking processor they were going to use i even said that they were going to use the tegra chip (laughs) that's crazy and nobody nobody even nobody gave me no props Mm -hmm. you know what i mean no no thankless job (laughs) parker (laughs) (laughs) yeah so yeah that stuff but uh Rumor, yeah, 2.0.0 update. I mean, I'd be curious if they did more things than just Piranha Plant and, like, fixes or whatever. Or, you know, like, uh, balancing fixes. But it's not like I haven't noticed really any big balancing issues, even in the community, that have been mentioned. I don't know. Do you know of any impending ones that should be happening? Uh, the probably... The, see, this is the the, uh, the darkest timeline. Mm. They're gonna they're gonna nerf Inkling. <laughs> uh, they're gonna uh, let's see who else might they need to nerf. Probably Peach and Daisy. They're pretty good in this game. Uh-huh. I don't know if they need to be nerfed, but they are very good. Yep. Uh, Crom is good in this game. Mm-hmm. Roy's. I mean, he's fine, I guess, but not as good as Crom because Crom's blade is like balanced and whatnot. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of characters that people are like King K rules broken. You need the nerve King K King K roll's not broken. You're just not good. Right. <laughs> um <laughs> uh, a, another one is like like DDD, like DDD DDD's not broken. It's like there there's just there's certain characters where like you're playing against a person and then there's other characters where you're playing against yourself. Right. Ganondorf that's a character you're playing against yourself. DDD, you're playing against yourself. Like it, it's you they have very clear openings that if you avoid that you can destroy them but if you're like playing them haphazardly or whatever you're gonna you're gonna get wrecked because yep. they hit you twice and you're dead yep. <laughs> <laughs> um so I, I i think that it'll probably be more so the people that like the the people in elite smash are complaining about mm-hmm. 
so inkling might might not even be a problem because me in particular like when i see inkling and maybe it's because i use inkling but when i see an inkling that's one of those characters like that's like ha i don't gotta think this match i can just win you know because yeah. a lot of people just rely on like the roller for instance mm-hmm. uh and that's easy to avoid you press any button and you win <laughs> against the roller <laughs> Except for running towards it or rolling. Yeah, right. Yeah, but I mean, I'm curious what happens in that one. I'm, but yeah, probably just prey on a plant and then some little things. If there's anything else, that's cool. Like if they throw in some other, I don't know. I could see them at some point like throwing in like ranch, home run contests or some of the old wars. stuff back in there just for fun. Yeah. Just because mm-hmm. you know, We're probably going to get some new spirits. Mm-hmm. That's what that's going to yep. happen. Good point. Um. We'll probably hear something about the Smash World app mm-hmm. uh, at some point. Yep. But I don't know about it if it's this app. I mean, this this uh, this update. Yeah. Maybe that's 3.0. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but good question, Pitar. Uh, Zephyr asks, in light of recent Nindy's showcase, they're showing upcoming indie games. Do you have your eye on any or are at least interested in any? Uh, Yes. I want to try Wargroove, mm-hmm. and I want to try the code. The code uh, cross code. Called? <laughs> cross yeah. code, yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, definitely Wargroove for me. Um, probably cross codes, maybe in most, and uh, maybe. So just every game, all of them. Yeah, I mean, all, of them. honestly, <laughs> all of them I was mildly interested in. Some of them I was fair, yeah. quite interested in. None of them I was like, oh, man, I'm 100% sold. But, you know. Yeah a bunch of them I was like pretty sold and then the ones that I wasn't I'm just was fairly interested in so yeah I don't know it'll be fun I think honestly the one that I'll probably be the least interested in is just forage because or forager or whatever just because I've already got Stardew Valley and I've gotten you know I can just play that because it's the worst part to Stardew Valley (laughs) so yeah we'll see um Grimane hey Grimane what's up with Metroid Prime 4 being delayed and thus the downfall of Nintendo assured, what device or what advice would you give Switch owners on what game to get in 2019 because there are just so many we already know are coming? Um, I would uh, hazard a guess that most Switch owners uh, don't even know what Metroid Prime is <laughs> uh, in terms of like, you know, like the people that bought this thing for Mario Kart. Yep. Uh, I think Metroid Prime 4 will be like the game that comes out and it's like it blows up because word of mouth after the fact. Yep. Um, Although, I mean, depending on how many, if, like if Metroid number. Prime Trilogy exists and then that does really well, yeah. then that could set precedent for it, I guess. That That's true. That's true. Casuals like the shooty games. Yeah. And Metroid's kind of the shooty kinda. game. Uh, so maybe Metroid, mm-hmm. they get, get you a Pokemon, you know, get, get you Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Yoshi games coming out. Uh, what else is coming uh, out? Fire sure Emblem, Fire Emblem, Luigi's Emblem. Mansion. You're, you're not gonna play Fire Emblem. <laughs> People, you're not gonna do that. I'm man. I'm uh, really curious to see a little bit more of Fire because I'm I'm gonna get it and I'm gonna play it. Yeah. Um, I've never yeah. played a Fire Emblem game as of yet, but there are some things in there I that I know will make Fire me. Emblem game is going to do really well. Yeah. <laughs> I think. I mean, pretty much every game that came to Switch so far has. Uh, broken previous precedent yep. where it's like, oh, Zelda, I mean, Zelda does fine, but it's not a big game. Breath of the Wild is like, nope, yep, that's not <laughs> true. And people are like, Smash Brothers, you know, it's never been the biggest game, it's a big game, but no, nope, mm-hmm. that's not true. Yep, so it's like, I, I think that, uh, same thing with Mario Odyssey. 3D Mario games, they don't really, nope, yep. <laughs> Honestly, I think a lot uh, of it so. too is that, um, <laughs> I started that sentence. I had thoughts and I've only remembered the beginning of that sentence. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a lot of games where, or just a lot of switch owners are really, I guess, informed at this point too, because it's yeah, so early on to true. where, uh, the games that, so like Kirby, for example, what people were kind of excited about it, but then it didn't turn out like kind of low reviews. So it sold fairly well right at the beginning, but then dipped back down. But pretty much, I feel like it's almost like I warned all of you. But I feel and you were yeah. like, you don't know the game's not out yet. You don't even know you didn't even play it yet. And then it comes out, and lo and behold, yeah. I was right. Just like Dan X. You know what? I'm right about everything. Everybody <laughs> subscribe to me and then subscribe to me again. And then uh, the hack of the printer that said subscribe to PewDiePie and put and Fanatics for. There you go. 
<laughs> oh man. But yeah, I feel like uh, the the games that like games so well initially, and then if they're reviewed really well, then they'll uptick from there. And if they don't, yeah. then they'll kind of fall down from there for the most part. Yeah. Um, but that said, like if Fire Emblem reviews as well as I don't know, we'd kind of be hoping or expecting based on other Fire Emblems and what we've seen from this one. I feel like the beginning should be fairly strong, and then it should just probably stay up there. I would imagine. So right. I don't know. But yeah, I there's Grimhane, if you're asking which one game to get in 2019, that is a tricky Pokemon. question. Probably Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> Good Pokemon. Unless it's the, unless it's just the like, okay, this is the same Pokemon game we've been getting for the last twenty years. If it's the same Pokemon game we've been getting for the last twenty years, get Animal Crossing. Yeah, right. True. Because <laughs> we've been getting the same Animal Crossing, but Animal Crossing is significantly newer, mm-hmm. so it still feels fresh. Yep. Yeah. Good question, Green Pain. Uh, Bebop, do you see the new news on Metroid Prime as potentially a good thing rather than all negative, like, uh, and then kind of roll, eyes roll emoji, I guess, just says eyes. I think it's, <laughs> I roll emoji. I think it's like the eyes emoji, like the looking towards. Oh, the, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, um, so rather than all negative, like Trilogy HD looking pretty saucy right now. <laughs> I like your phrasing, Bebop. Um, I, I mean, we talked about that a fair yeah. amount. Where it's like, I don't, I don't know if it is negative. Yeah, no. Um, I, I feel like it. It is sucks more for the here positive. and now, but there's so many other games already coming out that, like, yeah, you know, it. It mostly sucks if you really care about just Metro Prime Four. But if you I care about other games, only, we good. The only thing that looks negative is Bandai, which mm. I guess is a good thing that Bandai, uh, Singapore. Um, assuming that they were the people that worked on this, mm-hmm. uh, even though it sounds like more studios than just them were working on this yeah. game. Um, but assuming that they are, they look like they, they look pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> and maybe that's why Nintendo didn't specifically announce who it was because they didn't want to like make them look bad. Where it's like, yeah, those guys, they 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 messed it all yeah. up. Yeah, you know, we're giving it back to Metroid. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <to> Retro. Retro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, which goes pretty well into Grim Haynes' next question. Uh, did Logan need to get Retro Studios to help him with his video this week? Because <laughs> Retro. Uh, no comment, no <laughs> comment. Uh, my lawyer said I can't comment on uh, speculation, rumors and speculation. <laughs> um, and that's it. That's all the questions we got today. <sighs> any uh, any last thoughts, AJ? We almost, wait, wait. No, okay, wait. We maybe did it. We did. Two hours, I five think minutes. We did two hours. We did it. We did it, Parker. <laughs> we succeeded. Bum, bum, it bum. happened. We didn't even need Dan. Dan, better luck next time. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what I'm even talking no, about. <laughs> but they'll know one day. I don't know. Maybe not. But, yep. I'll never tell. Secret safe. Uh, yeah. Goodbye, that's it. people. You want to give the closing okay. spiel? Um, everybody go subscribe to me on youtube.com slash for next Do it. Um, everybody also subscribe to my other channel, youtube.com slash T-Series. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for enjoying this uh, nice little quaint show where we talked about the, the red, green, and blue specs on screens. That you press buttons and they light up in different ways to make our eyes think that we're doing something that they're actually not and our brains happy <laughs> sometimes <laughs> sometimes sometimes it's mario plus rabbits okay goodbye <laughs> Bye.